Greetings, pool fans. Uh, welcome to another exciting episode of Mad Apple Presents King of the Hill. Um, and we have ke- current King Champion Robbie Schmidt taking on a new challenger um, in the form of the indomitable Jeremy Fedkenhauer. Uh, and uh, they are lagging right now. Interestingly, both choosing an orange ball to lag with. Let's see who wins this lag. This is MH Potting Penglers. I'm here in the booth with Kyle. What's up, you guys? Kyle, what'd you say your nickname was? Uh, Patrick likes to call me Spicoli. Spicoli. Yep. Fast times. At Ridgemont High. All right. So it looks like we're playing eight ball. We got a race to eight, uh, 15. Yeah. Each player is going to 15. And we got Jeremy winning the lag, so he'll take the first break. And is it it's alternate or winner break? That is a great question. I think it's up to them, really. Oh, okay. Um, I believe. Uh, and uh, winner breaks, if it's not up to them and it's a, a mad apple king of the hill rule, uh, it, it would be winner breaks. Yeah, that's. A, I think that's the general consensus. So I think consensus. it's safe to say it's winner breaks, but we'll find out eventually. All right. So we got Jeremy hitting his first break here. Um, I watched him play at the uh, state tournament. And he played really well. Phenomenal, and, yeah. And that's right. You and I both commentated on his uh, one of his matches. Yep. On yep. his road to the final. Absolutely. Hey guys, I did talk to the players. It is uh, winter breaks. Thanks, uh, Chris. They chose eight ball. Obviously, Jeremy chose that, being the challenger. It's race to fifteen. BCAPL. Cue ball files only. Two man tournament. What was the entry fee to this two man tournament? Five hundred a piece. Five hundred dollar piece. Okay. Winner, winner takes all. One thousand in the middle, and you are correct. Two man tournament. Yeah, that uh, that high price one makes it fun to watch. I'll tell you what. Yeah, and the, both these players are fantastic players. Robbie uh, has sort of dominated for a while here. How how, how many uh? weeks has, has Robbie won we think it's like four or five yeah if anybody's out there in the there. chat and knows the actual exact answer to that he took a break didn't he yeah so yeah. he was still undefeated and then he came back and that's okay we got Fred Renner out there rooting for Jeremy what's up Fred but we do have a Robbie at the table right now he's shooting the stripes and they look pretty open other than that 14 ball yeah and he's gonna have a really tough time of it uh because his because his opponent is Jeremy. And yeah. this first rack, which is sort of a little bit awkward, isn't it? I suppose. I mean, if he can get on the nine ball, he can get on the 13. Yep. And the 14 is still a problem, though, isn't it? Yep. He can try to play short side. I don't really see a ball I like getting short side to, though. You know, it's a, it looks like a difficult path. You have to end up on a really good angle to get on short side of that 14. Right. And you've got to get the 10 ball out of there first for that so speed control here beautiful stroke just to even get a shot on the nine and that's as good as you could hit that perfect yeah he hit that real good really if he wants to it, as long as that 14 goes by the 10 first oh, he can maybe does, get there off it? the nine might be able to get oh, short side or not off the nine off the, the 13, 13. Yeah. yeah with the stop shot on the nine he'll have a good angle to go one rail short side on the 14 there he is he's ended up Pretty much what looks like just slightly to the side. He's going to bump into the eight ball just a little bit. It's not so easy to tell on the overhead view, but uh, looking directly at it through the window there, I see that he's actually going to bump into the eight ball. He's got a little bit of angle into the eight. But it's so soft he was able to miss it. No, he just... That tells us he's going to use the ten ball to sh- get behind the 14 and... Oh, no, look, he's looking at a kiss shot on the one. He wants to run straight into yeah, the face little, of the one. A little tap on the one board would, would do nicely here. This is a touchy shot. Yep. There you go. Okay, well, he ended up short side, but I'm not sure he can cut it because there's a scratch oh. on the top left. You have if to. If he doesn't get out here, the whole future of this match just took a fork in the road away from where it could have been. Absolutely, a first, first one. It's only one out of 15, but... Uh, it's nice to take the first one, isn't it? And he had it in the palm of his hand there. It's a tough shot. It was had to thread the needle there. Yeah, absolutely. He's not done yet. 
We got Patrick what? Glenn in the chat saying that this is five weeks for Ravi with one five, week off. Five weeks. Big shot here. Well, okay, he just tried to play a safety behind the eight ball there. There's a real good chance he's going to have to wait until the second rack to get an another shot here. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. My uh, doubt it. Now uh, the this table does play a little tougher than the uh, state tournament. So does it? Yep. Yep. Those pockets were pretty big over at the not like huge, but yeah, I did just have someone asking me about that. We got apparently these are tight, aren't they? Here. Yeah. At, at the Mad Apple. Right, Kendall. I think Kendall told me the other day that. It's a, actually four and an eighth and not four and a quarter, like like he hears a lot. So if Kendall's watching, let us know exactly. Well, how. I actually did just measure it the other day, and it's actually, believe it or not, four and a half. Really? And the guy who called me up and asked me, to, and I ran out and measured it, he, we were, he was surprised too, and he's like, well, how come your tables play tighter then? Right. Um, don't know. Right, it could have something to do, to do with the shim of the pocket, or. But, yep, you're looking like you're right there, Mh. Jeremy's gonna put him in the chair for the rest of this first rack. Nice little kill shot there, middle of the table. Couldn't ask for any better shape here. And it looks like we got Jeremy taking the first game if he can pot this eight, which... Pot this eight? I didn't want to... Uh, Speak in English there. <laughs> I watch a little bit of uh, the English guys talk, so... It's definitely in my vocabulary a little bit. Watch a lot of Carl. Oh, Carl boys. Right? Correct. Yep. Yeah, I think he's a, he does a real good job. So so with when it breaks, this, uh, that mistake of Robbie's there uh, may cost him more than one rag. We'll find out. Jeremy uh, has been known to break very, very well. In, that, in the state tournament, he was breaking really, really well all the way until the final, which might have been why he didn't <laughs> go, go, go into the lead and win that final right. yeah but he was scratching on the break and uh every every break was failing um complete switch from all his other matches yeah and um one thing is that in that state tournament you know i was they were all breaking and running the whole time there was not a lot of misses there wasn't a lot of uh there wasn't a lot of of opportunities yeah. at the table if you if you lost one you're pretty much giving the rack away. So when you get to this He's, level. He, he hit a really good break there. I mean, he controlled the cue ball. I actually did a little, uh, press the replay button just to see, see how well he controlled the cue ball. Blasted the balls all over the table. Crowd in the pockets, but guess what? Nothing went in. So Robbie does get a nice chance at the beginning of the second rack to redeem himself. But what's he going to do with that? And that's what makes eight balls so interesting is there's so many different things that you might consider here. Yeah, absolutely. There's lots of uh, lots of possibilities, lots of different patterns, and you know you can play the same table a hundred different ways so and still get playing, out. So he's playing, you know, on an open table. He's playing a combination onto the two ball, and uh, after that, solids look nice. Oh yeah, that, that was a good decision there. Yeah, it was the only trouble ball on the table for solids, and he took it out as yeah. soon as he could. So and the only slightly awkward one, actually, don't forget the eight ball. Um, because it, which pocket are you going to shoot the eight ball in, and what ball are you going to use to get on it? The fact that he's shooting now tells me he's already got an answer for that. Yeah, he'll probably use the one or the, one or the six. Which pocket do well, you shoot the eight ball in? Um, I like the eight ball in the left side pocket if you can get there. Oh. Huh. Which, if you really oh. play that combo well. You shouldn't have a problem. And he's let the cue ball loose a little bit. So towards the end of this rack, getting on the eight, you have to be well in control. And he's he's going to let the cue ball fly on this one. He's going to make sure he makes this ball. 
Didn't really want to break up the two awkwardly positioned stripes because those two stripes were not sitting nicely. If he finds a way to get out, it's, it doesn't matter that he broke out Jeremy's ball. But So that's interesting, Ooh, isn't it? No, yeah, that is very interesting. Is he on it? That one ball, no. He's not, I don't believe. So we're gonna, he likes his draw shots, does Robbie, so he's going to let a good old draw stroke out here. Zip back to the back end rail for... And that puts him absolutely perfect, really. He's got to yeah. probably negotiate a little nudge. No, stop shot. Well, that's a well executed. Just it's not in yet. You've got to focus on this last ball. Yep, yep. Eight ball on the bottom left. That was nice one ball combination. Really good. That. And that shows that Robbie's definitely up for not losing his King of the Hill title if he run, if he if he can help it. Yeah, absolutely. That was and, awesome. Uh, Robbie's an exciting player to watch. He plays very quickly. He knows what he's doing right away. And uh, the way he got out there, well, in a way that looked easy, shows you, shows you that he solved that question about the eight ball right away. Uh, as soon as he started shooting those balls in, he he had a plan there. Now, of course, I don't know if he could have predicted that one ball would have ended up right quite where it is. Worked out nicely. Yeah, yeah. He had a good speed where he knew it wasn't going to stay on that end rail and get in too funny of a spot, but he really did just cream that three ball to get on that shot, this one right here. Yeah, that was a great shot. Ended up dead perfect on the one ball, makes the rest of the rack super easy, but that three ball was no easy shot, man. When that's on the rail, you got to draw it back, you know, right next to the point of that side pocket. Definitely not a uh, shot for the faint of heart. But Robbie's shown us in these he plays with a sort of a fearless attitude, storming around the table. Yeah, you gotta love it, man. Uh, it's it's an it's yeah. a gung ho, you know, shoot so, the lights out type of style. So shout out to our viewers already, Fred Reiner. Hello, Fred. Patrick Glynn, commentator extraordinaire. Riley Whetstone. Is that measurement side to side? Oh, we're talking about the side of the pockets. Size of the pockets. From point to point, I measured that. Mm, uh, okay, so you didn't measure the, it at the shelf, at the, no, at the end of the shelf. No, and it's not parallel, so it might be a little bit, it would be a little bit different. Yeah. I think it is ever so slightly smaller as, yeah. you, go, as you go deeper. There's a couple ways you can, different ways you can measure the pocket. That'll give you kind of different readings on it. But generally, if you're going to give a reading, I think you're talking about point to point. Yeah, for the most part, yes, I believe so as well. Um, but really, I feel like most people don't really know the actual inches. They just take two balls and measure it point yep. to point with two balls. And really tight is when you start not being able to fit two balls in that pocket. Yep. So. And that's what these are. They get wedged fairly close, not far behind the points uh, on these tables when you try and wedge two balls in. And I've seen that happen in league too where the two balls get wedged in there, and so you're just going to play a general shot and tap one of them in. Yeah. Uh, and the cue ball bounces them off, and there they stay They stay there, locked in. Yeah, it spits um, the cue ball out. It's that, super funny to that watch. That happens on, the, on these diamonds. That is. That is a funny shot to watch when it comes up in league or whatever. It looks like we got a little bit of a player break. Yeah. So we can go right into the questionnaire, which I know both of these players have been on here, and so we probably... Covered a lot of this, but Jeremy from Sun Prairie, 43 years old. Let's see. He says he uses a Tiger Emerald tip. On a Viking queue. Is it? Oh, there he is. He's an eight ball player, so we're, I guess we're not too surprised that these guys are playing eight ball tonight. His favorite player is Shane. Everybody likes Shane, so I'm sure he grew up watching Shane, or when he started, Shane was probably the best American for him to look up to, like a lot of us. Yeah, and he's playing with a white carbon shaft. White is spelled W H Y T E, so that's somebody's name and not actually an indication of the color. Who's your favorite player, MH? I like Chris Melling. Yeah, the highlight reel, huh? The walking highlight reel. And I have to say, I do have a lot of gained a lot of respect for Darren Appleton ever since I met him and he came here. Yeah, yeah, he's one person I've always wanted to meet. I heard that guy loves pool more than anybody out there. <laughs> we say, what does that mean? Yeah, he, this guy loves pool. 
Well, he always watches pool, Loves always talks about talk, you know. It's like all he cares about. If you get Darren Appleton, you're going to get a pool, something about pool, you know. He won't, uh, I heard that he really doesn't do much else. He, he's a huge pool fanatic, whereas once you start getting to that pro level, sometimes these guys, when they're not around the table and they're not working, they don't necessarily like to uh, think about it or, you know, they're not like uh driven when they're not on the table right but i heard darren is not that way he'll hmm. talk to anybody anytime about anything pool related so he is one person that i would like to meet we got robbie here running the solids the solids look yeah, good on the table a, 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 he broke the balls nice and he's given himself a good good chance here but he's got to figure out how to get down on that five ball and you can actually stay up close to the middle of the table and just cut it in from, from up there. Yeah, he might do that next just you, because the one ball's kind of hanging. When he plays insurance. the one, is he, is he going to play some little kiss on the 13? Or is he trying to gonna get straight on the one, do you think? And No, yeah, I'm you, interested to see if he takes the five next and just stun up like this. So now he's going to play this five ball two rails. He can, I should say. Oh, I see. Yeah, he is. He can play this five ball two rails, get rid of that problem ball, and have the it. cue ball That's end pretty, up in the middle. Yeah, you're right. He is on it, and it's pretty much the best angle you could hope to get. Right. It's a, it's a little distance. Yeah. yeah. Distance, yeah. A little bit longer than stun you would like. Stun around and end up in the middle of the table. Right. Just far enough that the level ball doesn't... Maybe block you. or something, right. yeah. Be nicer for him if that 11 ball wasn't there. I mean, really, he could slow roll the five and play the two ball uh, short side up table and then roll forward for the one if he wanted to as well. But it's all about his his choice and his decision. I think I like taking the five as well. You say slow roll the five ball and then have the two ball the long way. Yeah. Ups, upstairs, yeah, correct. Yeah. So there's that a couple might, different that might options. Be he's definitely got options. You know, he well, left Robbie himself likes to hit the ball. Slow. He doesn't like these. Oh, there you go. He's slow rolling. I'll take it back. How's your, how's this little kiss gonna work out? Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> he he should have the one ball, right? Like a masse shot, kind of masse draw shot, sort of. Well, if if any of that edge is hanging out on the one ball, he'll make it. Oh, see? he's going right at the one. Okay, he's got yeah. just enough of an edge. Any kind of edge you can see there yeah, is enough. Yeah, and he's hit at that speed because he he likes the angle it gives him. But it's kind of well, at least he didn't freeze on the top rail. Yeah, yeah, he he's. He's got a good chance. You know, these guys are good shooters. Uh, this is definitely like a, another one of those shots. Yeah. Much like and the five It ball. looks like a long distance to the two, but really, Robbie's so big. This is like a five-foot pool table for him. <laughs> and a toy, a kid's table, and, huh? Uh, it's not that far, is it, Robbie? Yeah. But you still got to put a good stroke on it. That he did. That he did, and he's on the eight ball on the side, so. Could have had a little bit more angle on that, too, and would probably would have. Been a little bit better on this eight. Yeah, I think he's got to be pretty happy with where he's at, though. He played that rack pretty well. Uh, just bear down. The, you know, these are all makeable shots. Yeah, I hope you don't get a sort of a weird contact that makes it heavy throw forward on this one. Yeah, the way the cue ball kind of bounces off that 14 ball can maybe get in your head, too. But he yeah, didn't yeah, let it. Perfect. Aimed it on the far side of the pocket, so if it did get a kick... And throw forward, it still goes into the other side of the pocket. Yeah, absolutely. So he's going to take the lead. That's yeah, and that's a break and run. You know, and you can definitely beat Jeremy if you don't let him shoot. That was and really well is, done. And this is winner breaks. And, yeah. And uh, Robbie gets, gets momentum going and uh, see if he can keep it going here. We definitely have an Open opportunity to see a couple of these guys, run, you know, or a couple of chances for these guys to run, like uh, a couple packs, you know. It's a race of 15. We could see uh, maybe three or five packs, and these guys, they definitely have it in them. Another good break. So they're definitely opening up well for him. Um, looks like he's got a shot on the four ball. And a quick scan of the table says that, yeah, solids aren't that bad. And maybe he kind of has to, while he's on the four, figure out a way to get the two out of there right away. And then yeah. after that, he's pretty open. Now the two will go in the bottom left. 
he can see enough of that. There oh, you go. He had a little angle that he could n- nudge that temple, and that's opened up the two nicely. Yeah, that was really well played, and I wasn't sure he had the angle there, but obviously that's why I'm in the booth, and he's down on the table. But that was really nicely done. I think he got rid of his biggest problem on the table. Now he can use the seven as an out ball, the five as an out ball, the one as an out ball. He's got plenty of options. The table's wide open, so I like yeah. to see him go up three one here. So you're possibly. saying, yeah, because the eight ball what goes in the side, and you use one of those balls you just mentioned to stay down there. Yeah, or if you don't like in the or side, the you can use the five. The yeah. Yep. Yep. He's got all the options he really needs. Just sure. hold your nerve. Yeah, the seven and the one. Yeah, use those last. Six balls got to get find a pocket though, so maybe you sort of have to find a way to. Yeah, the three ball to get straight on the five, and the five then you get on the six in the in the middle. Yeah, that's that's what he's doing. That was Just nice. Gently done. roll forward a little bit here, and stay on the six ball in the side, and he'll be fine. Yeah, it, and he'll definitely make sure he doesn't overstroke this ball, or get on the wrong side of the six, moving away for the seven one. Um, yeah, see, so he's really eyeing up that. Yeah, it doesn't, that want, angle. It doesn't want to get hooked. And if he does, which he probably won't, he's still got a shot on the one ball or the seven to recover. Yep. He's got, and that's just a testament to how well he's hitting the break early in this match. Yeah. You know, there's another really good split. He didn't have too many problems on the table, at, if any at all, yeah, really. He, he's standing there tapping his cue and he's just mouthed an expletive to himself. So something about this he doesn't like. Kind of looks like you just roll it in and let the cue ball go down for the one, but. Maybe you just don't want it. Maybe he wants to leave the one till last, really. He'd rather. Oh. What's he doing there? Yeah, I'm not sure what he's looking at, but, he, he, you know, you got to make this six. Maybe he's at an angle where he feels like he can't avoid the seven, but I think he can. I forget what he's looking at there. He's trying to go around the seven. That's what he's looking at. I think he's on an angle where oh, he's see. seeing Cubal he's has running to dance into around the seven. seven ball. Okay. Zing, zing. And just, that was beautiful. Just like he diagrammed it. Right. What a great little recovery. Yeah, that was really Yeah, nice he didn't like the spot he was in, and he found a way to stay there. Still, this shot's awkward and can, can be messed up. A uh, lot of spin. You're going to make sure you actually make the ball. Tons of right-hand spin there, and he, he hit it at the right speed and made the ball. Yeah, negotiated. Well, well. I say he hit the right speed. He still didn't get as enough. Uh, uh, it would love to be straighter on this one ball. Right. Um, if you got too much angle. Ooh. So he tried to play for the other. Okay. For so the, the same, in the same pocket. Same pocket. And yeah, that the, outside uh, spin got him. I think that sometimes makes a cue ball square a little bit. You get a little bit of a heavy contact. And you end up hitting that outside point pretty heavy. And that's what he did there. He rattled the ball. He hit the near point, you're saying? Uh, the, the, the left side point. Right there. Oh, the far point. Yeah. Yeah, it could have overspun it. If you hit that spin shot too slow, it overspins and the spin increases and it's too much spin. Right, yep. You get too much throw and a little heavy contact. This, this ain't a, like a dead ringer out here, though, with the one ball hidden, buried in the pocket like that. Right, it takes away the 13. And, and Does the nut, 13 the, go up in the bottom right is we're looking at it. You mean it. 11 or the Whatever the uh, 8 ball, whatever oh, the, the 8. Yeah, the 9, the nine ball. ball yeah. yeah, he's shooting the 13 right now. He's got to play that 9 ball short side. shot here. Zinging around the, re- the angles. Look at that, he's gone into it, has he? A little nudge would be nice, oh. but, well, now it definitely goes in the bottom right. Yeah, it doesn't have necessarily a very nice shot but here. It doesn't have anything, yeah, this but is he, not offensive. I think he's just going to bear down and shoot the 11 into the corner. Cut the 11, let the cue ball run back and forth. Got to gotta get lucky for shape on the uh, for the next shot, too. You know, you don't really know where the cue ball's ending up here. It's got this combination. Uh, oh, you just played a safety. So, <clears throat> that was a good safety. Actually, uh, he left the cue ball on the rail, and it looks like he left it somewhere around the angle. You know, I think he can kick it one rail around. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was thinking about that because he knows one rail kick is actually with a ball hanging is fairly simple, or at least definitely gives Robbie a chance here. Um, so deep that you might scratch if you hit the one ball too squarely. And do you get on the on the eight ball? Where does the eight ball go? Exactly. Uh, but 
He may have uh, just given Robbie a, a ch- if he draws this a little bit, comes out flat off that rail. Yeah, he needed to draw it. If he'd drawn that, it would have bent into the one ball. And that's another thing I was going to say. That was a pretty smart safety as far as leaving the cue ball on the side rail like that, where you didn't really give him a whole lot of options with that draw on the on the uh because i was thinking the same thing but when you're jacked up like that it uh definitely adds a lot of difficulty to the shot so well played on jeremy's part he made a really simple safety uh really really effective now jeremy's probably going to go at this now and try and run out low he doesn't have to there are a lot of players here who might consider uh using a one of those stripes uh to combination the one in and hook him him on the eight <clears throat> yeah, but, I think, uh, and that's Jeremy's gone. <sighs> These tight pockets we were talking about. Yep, he got him. Given a reprieve, you can see there he's not too happy. To with Robbie's the, ball, it didn't quite drop. Not too happy with how that turned out, and that's a do or die shot. Cause you open up the eight ball, so now you can put that eight ball anywhere you would like. And unfortunately, Jeremy kind of gave him that game away. But still okay in the side pocket here. Yeah. I hate this shot, but I'm sure these guys are okay with it. No problem. But uh, I end up choking these most of the time. He'll hit this good, though. I got faith in him. Nice shot. Robbie going up 3-1. 3-1. And that's not what the odds but makers would have predicted. N- definitely not according to their Fargos, right? But that's and that just just goes to show. I mean, really, we're talking about one ball that rattles and didn't drop. Yeah, exactly. And uh, kind of each there in that rack, and <clears throat> Jeremy's was the last, and that's the one that counts. You're not going to see a lot of big mistakes like that. I mean, I can't lie; that was a pretty big mistake from Jeremy. Uh, you don't really expect to see him well, do too many of those. Ball left. in hand, yeah. And I'm not saying he played the wrong shot, but uh, I was saying that you didn't have to go for it because because by combination the one in and opening up your two balls and making sure they both have a pocket because the one's gone makes your situation a bit nicer and if you can get ball in hand or if he gets a good hit and opens it uh, you're out watch out cue ball he almost scratched in the but bottom left i'm sure jeremy would probably make the same decision again next time only he'd make it that looked like it was dry i don't think he made anything I'm not 100 percent sure but we're about to find out all right yep we got jeremy at the table Definitely is looking to uh, make up for that earlier mistake, that last rack. Yeah, and I think stripes look pretty nice, don't they? Right, the 915 is kind of a problem, but the 15 goes easy, so if you get on the 15 early, should be fine. He's not quite there yet. He'll take the uh, bottom ball here and the bottom left. You could dance the cue ball around or draw it back. He's drawing it back. That's a smooth stroke. A lot of the times you end up pulling those balls off the rail when you don't stroke it well. And now he's looking good to get that 15 problem solved after this. Yeah, and it's shot. nice. If you can get a, just a hair short of straight on this 15, you can shoot it in and draw back and be nice down the nine. Yep. And really that 14 no isn't a problem. I think it goes by the two and the seven. So. Yeah, they're probably he's probably going to end up shooting all the, three of these balls in the same pocket. The 13 there is, you can throw that in to get position. Yeah. No, that would. <clears throat> so that's another uh, testament to Robbie's break, man. He he broke the ball, broke dry, and looks and gave Jeremy a wide open look at a, you know, really an elementary out for these guys, you know. Elementary, my dear Watson. Yes, sir. So. He's going to take this game back. He made a, a pretty big mistake in that last one, but it looks like it's, it'll be forgotten here after he pots that eight ball and he'll keep on trucking through to make it 3-2. Nicely done. Well, now we get a chance to see how uh, Jeremy's breaking. He had a dry break before that opened up really well. Gifted a nice one to Robbie. Yeah, that kind of started a little run for Robbie. But he extinguished the fire there and put the momentum out. He's back at the table breaking. 
pretty good match so far. I feel like it'll be neck and neck for most of this. Like I was, like we were saying earlier, re these guys really don't get a lot of opportunities per rack. You know, one or two mistakes, and the other guy's gonna make it pay. So that's right. Really, I think it's whoever's gonna play the more consistent. You know, make the better decisions on the table is who's gonna win this one. Let us know in the comments, guys, who's gonna win this one. You got Jeremy or Robbie? So we've got Sean Wilkes out there. All we want is a hill hill outcome and Rhonda Fetkenhauer. She doesn't she says not me. She doesn't want a hill hill match. She wants Jeremy to just <laughs> storm ahead and take it easily. Yeah, they're playing for a thousand dollars, you guys. Thousand in the middle. So Good evening, Randy Pollock. It's a nice little paycheck at the end of this one. Take about a week's worth uh for your nine and five job couple hours on the pool table and we'll see how he hits these balls yeah, watch how he controls the cue ball look at that nice little just stunned jump. backwards with no sideways motion i mean how square and accurate do you have to hit it and he hits a good uh he makes a good break Got there a little kick kick up table but balls went in he's got a good good start there on solids if you like solids but what are you going to do with the five ball? Yeah, the five's a big problem for There both. are a bunch of solids around the middle of the table that can be shot into side pockets or even off the five. Yeah. Break stuff out. I think you got decent Steph break balls on both what sides, about, too. What about stripes? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, the 13 can help you with that 512. Really, you'd have to play that now if you wanted to play stripes, though, I think. Or he could take the nine. That's what he's looking at, too. Um. But then not or whatever ball in that top right. The eleven, corner, yeah, it's hanging the eleven out, close to the top corner. You can take the eleven, which is not easy shape for your next you shot. Can end up, yeah, right. End up difficult on on the next ball. So he's going with solids. I like. So we're going to find out fairly quickly what his plan is here. Yeah, it's going to be tough to negotiate that five and get out. He might, he, he might see a safety. Drifted the cue ball into the middle of those balls, which often seems to be a good idea, give you lots of options. But sometimes you come, you know, you look at where he's at there, and you think, well, don't see anything, uh, nothing too inviting. You know, what's he going to do? He need, the, now that the seven and the three ball kind of foul each other, as it were, um, you don't have that as an option. Yep, he. That's, this is his only real shot here. Trickles that ball so, in. If he can get behind it, he can play the one or the three ball off the five. And he can use this set of shot on the seven to, uh, to, to to get on something like that if that's what he wants. But he's scratching his head and, and a little shake of his head. But no worries, back down on the shot. This is touchy. Watch out, side pocket. Yeah, and so he's played for the three ball. Look at the speed. Off, off the five. Look at the speed he hit that, that uh, seven ball at. It was nicely done. Yeah, and he even hit it into the thick part of the pocket. He was just trying to limit where the cue ball went. Off the five, hit it perfect. Yeah, that was another beautiful Almost shot. Almost let the cue ball roll, roll into trouble, but uh, he's on the one ball. He's got to thread the needle here. There's a lot of solid stripes in the way as he goes from the one to the five, and presumably the Five is going to lead him down somehow to the six ball up table. But there's an awful lot of strike balls for him to negotiate. So it might be more of a draw shot to the side rail, probably. Yeah, he's still got a little work to do here. You know, you just got to make sure you uh, don't make any silly errors and end up on the wrong angle. Yeah, so he's left himself really. It was probably a draw shot to sort of scoot towards where the 11 is. You just don't want to run into the eight stunt, ball dead hole sure. here. You right. don't want to get There's around the there, Yeah, you don't want to scratch. You don't want to be hooked behind the eight. And he's actually gone into See the what eight. I'm that saying? Was, it was not supposed to do that. There should have been a little bit more draw on that ball. That's exactly what I uh, what he, I was hinting at. You don't want to run into the eight. There's a lot of weird yeah. things that can happen. And now it's Jeremy's turn to uh, run into trouble on his last ball. Yeah. Worst thing you can do in a game of eight ball now. What are you going to do, Jeremy? We call this what one ball What can you possibly hill. do here to save this game? 
Absolutely. Yeah, this is no easy. Uh, Answers on a postcard, safety. please. He can kick this six ball into the pocket and he needs to make this six. Does it go? By, I don't think Boom. it went by Maybe the eight. Maybe it didn't. didn't. Did he get a rail? No. Yeah. Did so. not. That's another big mistake. Yeah, he Jeremy. was hoping for that ball to go in and foul and get in the way of the eight and just cause some somewhat of a problem. Uh, Stripes, obviously, still having a huge advantage if it did get into some kind of tactical thing. But, uh, yep, Jeremy put himself is, in one ball hell. Well, ball in hand, this is as much advantage as you need, Robbie. Ball's wide open, still got to pick a path. But anyone that works will be considered good. Mark Bell, what's up, Mark? Let us know who's going to win this match, you guys. It's looking like uh, Robbie's got a good opportunity to make it 4-2. to two. Big, big mistake by Jeremy. It's too late in the racks that he's had so far. And really, uh, we don't see Robbie not capitalizing and making Jeremy pay for those mistakes. So... I'm interested to see how Jeremy fights through those those couple early errors. If it uh, affects the rest of his game. So he can take either ball he likes here. It looks like he's playing the cut on the 12. And then he'll play a little draw shot. Put a touch of right spin there to get nice and straight on the uh, 11. And this is going to show you how... His control, if you can draw back just enough to make this very simple, and there it is. End up real straight. A little stop shot there would have been in trouble. Overdrawing, that's possible. Happens. Um, oh. Ooh, and he snuck it doesn't matter how many points too. it hits before it goes in. If it drops, I believe it says in the rules, if it goes down, it still counts. It, he didn't call that three rail bank. Yeah. But uh, if, unless... it, if it hung that one... That would have been uh, quite a shot. Nonetheless, we got Robbie going up to a two-game lead, 4-2 to two in a race to 15. All right, let's see this power break of Robbie's here, going close to right down the middle. Yep, he's been hitting how, good. Yeah, see how square he hits this head ball. Bounces off sideways, that brings scratches into play when you get unlucky, the side pocket and the corner pocket. Are both within reach if you if you let that happen. Take a look at the. Uh, it was a successful break. He made a ball. He's got a look. He's uh, going to be thinking about shooting that twelve ball, and then uh, he's just got to plan the nine ball somehow. Yep, the nine will go between the eight four and the side, and stop it right there on that. On that good old ball next to the. Next to the nine, if you can get straight on, was it the eleven? Yeah, and there he is. He did. He's done that, no, just I, like you said. Right? I really don't think he's straight enough, to be honest with you. He's going to float to the right a little bit for the nine ball here, so he won't take the nine here, or the uh, the he won't play for the nine. I think yeah, he's got that. I was 13. just thinking about playing the eleven there and tapping the five ball, running into nudging, it, nudging it out the way. But only do that if you th think that's going to end up. You need a shot on one of these stripes. Yeah, he can run into the five, but... And actually, if he shoots this 13 ball and gets that gone before he does that shot that we described, then the nine ball will go in the same pocket that he's shooting the 13 in now. So he may still be planning to do that exact same thing. See, this Did angle, I think, is a lot better. Yeah. Did he... If he got... I think he just got there. I think his body language tells me he just fell short. Oh, okay. It's okay, though. You can still use the 10 ball. Yeah, 10, 15, 11, 9. You don't really like saving your problems for the end. Well, it's but. not bad. It kind of looks quite natural, this, and you just got to make sure you're, he's happy with, yeah, rolling the 11 in and right. brushing the, the the 5. And, yeah, it is a long corner pocket. Oh, he missed that oh, ball. There's all that to think about. If you look if you look he, at that one, he, he, queued, distracted. he queued across that ball a little bit. From right to left, he, he didn't get all the way through that ball. He's super clean. He queued yeah. across it a little bit. And I was going to throw unwanted spin and unwanted throw. Jeremy has a pretty nice open table here. He might be... Well, the one ball is the issue. He may be on the five right now, but the one ball doesn't go. 
Right. So that is a bit of a problem. He did get pretty fortunate. He can get the one ball open with the seven. So if he ends up on a good angle for the seven, I feel like he's got a good chance yeah, to get on the one. Nice little safety there. He's playing very patient. He's playing more patient than I saw in the uh, in the state tournament, which I think is a testament to how the t table's playing a little bit more. Now, Robbie could play here, just a gentle one rail kick to rest up on the temple and maybe nudge the temple and the one ball. You know, keep it keep it buried. He's kicking at the eleven. Yeah, and he's gonna plan on making the eleven and getting out. It's yeah, the, he called it. Still, and the and the temple's not bad. There is there is a window down table down table for the ten. So it's still a good choice. Yeah, I like that shot. I feel like even if you do miss it, you're always going to kind of block that pocket because that that 10 ball has got a pretty big pocket from that angle, even though you're kicking. So I didn't mind the decision. I felt like he was always going to end up pretty safe blocking a pocket even right. if he missed it. And now that the 11 is so down there, it's tougher for Jeremy to concede playing a similar kind of safety. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, there's nothing really very safe. Yeah, yeah, I don't see much on the table I like too much. I mean, like I you mean, said. I mean, these balls are kind of all blocking each other, so he could stay on the left side of the table and really not leave too much. But uh, he's got something more constructive in mind. Mm -hmm. Playing the 7 off the back of the 11. No, I think he called safe. I think he's playing the combo. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And a little nudge on the one ball. So that was a pretty effective shot. He didn't give anything offensive away. Assuming that nine doesn't bank well, between the four fifteen. Nine ball. Yeah, if he wasn't so tied up on the one ball here. That, uh, he's Chinese snooking on the one ball, but uh, he would be cutting the nine ball in otherwise all, all the way down and breaking the ten out probably at the same time. Hey. But uh, it's a bit, bit much to ask. You're one of the only other people I know, because that's what I call it sometimes too, Chinese snooker, Chinese snooker when yeah, you're on so the back of it. A lot of people just say, like, tree chopped. I've heard, like, shooting from the trees. And yeah. Well, when I was a kid, they would say that on TV. I don't. They probably don't say it anymore on the snooker matches. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that was just normal usage. It just means you're sort of on the... Ja In America, yeah. they say jacked up over the ball. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's what you Chinese do snooker, where you're sort of frozen on the, on the far side of it. Of course, there's so many Chinese snooker players these days. Yeah. Not very PC anymore. But uh, we'll see what he negotiate, how he negotiates his one ball. Oh, see, so yeah, yeah, I like this. He's they're so still this. playing real patient. Now he's got two. Well, good yeah, they basically they've both got a problem down there, and so mm -hmm. they're not going to just blast it open and hand the game over to the opponent. Safety battle, you have to say. Well, the side with more balls. Jeremy has an advantage here. He doesn't really want to break this up, or does he? Uh, he didn't. He didn't, so I think he's okay. Well, that's actually really good. I mean, he, what he, the reason he did something like that is probably just because he knows he wants to get that 15 ball down there close to those balls, and he definitely achieved that. It was risky, though, because he hit it with speed where he could have popped those open and sold out. Yeah, that was really um, risky. But he now has given a little bit more control to Stripes, um, other than the fact that he's not at the table now. Right, and it looks like uh, Jeremy's so going to go. Jeremy's pretty confident in where his balls are laying to break his one ball yeah. out. And the fact that he just shot that ball in quickly tells you he's on the path to uh, achieving something here. He's ready to go. So he's breaking it right now with the five ball. Yep. Right? Yep, his brain told him it's time to go, time to shoot. Well, you still have plenty of other balls on the table. Did you he never make that 10? Exactly. No, be, he didn't. be nice for him if he had, so he's still got a problem. And that's why you do that as early in the rack as possible, because if this dives into another safety shot here, he'll be happy he's got more balls. Yeah, I would... Um, yeah, and, that, and really, with where that 10 ended up, you don't really have a lot of safety opportunities, so I think and he's got to go here. He's, yeah, you're right. He's got to shoot this out, because uh, he's got a cut shot on the 7. The cue ball's going to fly, and he's still got balls in the middle of the table, and the one ball goes... I was going to say... So or he can... Nestle though. through the 10, right? You can make the one... If you get down on it, nice. It, it's close, man. That's really close. I feel like if you go off the 10 first, you're catching that point for yeah, sure. Yeah, I agree. So you, you want to just catch the rail first before you brush the 10. It's uh, it's definitely 
really, really tight, yeah. man. I don't like it at all, to be honest with you. So um, needs to get nicely. He's gonna shoot this, so okay. He's gonna use the two ball to get on the one. No, he's not. Oh, look, look at, at this. this. Get ready with that replay button. Did he sneak behind the temple? Oh, oh yes, how's he did. your luck? I mean, eh? The better you are, the less luck there is in this game. But he hit that almost absolutely perfect. Yeah, and that was a genius. How did that get behind the temple? Genius angle. All that inside that spin. One. That was. <laughs> he's not done yet, though. All right. So as long as that nine ball holds up, he's got a bank on the one. Yeah, all that same cut shot off the rail, off the ten that we just described. Both. So he's got two different cho options here. See what he likes. Yeah, he's called the bank. You gotta make sure you stay on the right side of the eight ball, otherwise the ten ball gets in the way of the eight. Oh, look at that shot. <laughs> oh, you know, you have to hit the replay button there, but we'll not be able to replay the previous one. But it'll end up on the highlight tape. Yep, both good ones. Wow. So his only saving grace there is the fact that now the nine ball is not ov obviously got a pocket. Let's see. But yep. Robbie has some choice here. Hasn't played a safety. Yeah. Which is smart. This one ball is kickable, though. He's going to have to load it up with uh, left spin around the eight, though. Yeah, he could have got tighter on the back of the 15 there. He was mm -hmm. pretty close to that shot. Yeah, he had a good chance to lock him up pretty hard. but He just he... didn't want to risk sneaking into that window there and giving him a cut shot on the one. Exactly that. Or running into the 15 a little heavy I mean, and really, giving him a cut. Really, at that distance, he might even jump it. He does, yeah. I wouldn't, but I'm, I, I don't like those jump shots when they're close. But Depending on how prominent you are with the jump cue, it looks like he's going back for it, maybe. Yeah. And it might be that he didn't really have a good shot on the simple one rail kick shot because of where the eight ball and the side pocket are. Yeah, absolutely. So it might be possible with a lot of spin, but he's taken to the air. He's got the pitching wedge out. Shoot the jump. Shoot the jump shot gets over it but did, if you notice he put a little bit of mass a on that ball and oh. really ended up pretty fortunate he's he didn't give anything straight forward and he's got a pretty tough shot on this nine ball in the top left if yeah. he wants it but that's it it's a challenge i mean he's definitely got a pocket and he's just going to be shooting at it he's planning to get out here which means you have to give it enough that you don't stay on that side of the table and hook yourself behind the one so you really do have to give this a good shot here uh it doesn't look like he's got any simple safeties that aren't more likely to just sell out because the Womble's hanging over the side pocket. So how do you not leave him a shot on it? Right. So well, the safeties are out the window, really. I mean, he's going to make this ball. How do you like laying the cue ball on the right side rail? You know, does that one pass the 15 too? Oh, it's a safety. You're saying. Well, Look at that. Well, if you hit him like shot, that. The, he had, Robbie had the balls to shoot that shot. We'll Pounded it in hard enough to bounce off the rail. He's earned himself this chance to finish this rack. That was beautiful. That yeah, was, that was a really good shot. That deserves to win the rack at that point, you know. And that was a, a really patient game from both players there. And Robbie's just going to nudge it out, it looks like, again. Bear down. It's not in yet until you actually aim this ball and do it. Absolutely. It's so easy to do that, isn't it? You play the trick shot previous to get you the chance. That doesn't mean this ball's going to automatically go in unless you actually aim it. Like you always do with all the other shots. Yeah, sometimes no, I get no in problem. that uh, in that mindset. I'll hit a really, really good ball. I always say the next ball after a great shot is the hardest shot. You know, like you, you got to follow up, and a lot of the times they're not straightforward because it's hard to play shape on a difficult shot like that. And so I'll end up missing a lot of like fairly routine shots. After something really, really difficult, just because I hit that last one too good, is what I say. Yeah, uh, we do have the delay on the on the left and the right there for you, and we do that on purpose so it is kind of like an instant replay. Each, each and I still shot. haven't seen any any other streams out there copy this, but I do honestly think this is the best way. Uh, it uses up the, the screen, I think, much more efficiently to have both sides. Uh, 
and you get that overhead view and uh, I think it's a really good way to watch pool. Yeah, I I completely agree and you get to you get to see a shot more than once. You don't have to pay attention to both screens at the same time that way. And you you get to see all the good shots twice, you know, yeah. and to, from two different angles at all the time as well. So I really do enjoy it as well. It makes our job a little easier as well. I'm surprised other other streams aren't copying it or doing it. I haven't seen it yet. No. Nope, Mad neither. Apple is the only place. And we've been doing it this way for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to watch them both and watch the replays. You can just focus on the straight on view because it's probably more the screen a little bit. It is. It, I, I think it's really good. And if you're not used to it, it can be a little weird. But after you kind of kind of settle in, you see a lot, a lot more. You see a lot more what's going on at the table and you don't miss little details that you would if you could only see it once. So Jeremy's picking these stripes off nicely, but begs the question, which what are you going to do with the eight ball? Right. You got to run into it with the 11 or the 12 right there. Or the, what is that, the 10? Yeah, that's the 10. The 11 and the 10 near it, so those could be possible balls. Right. And the 11 and the 9 are a bit awkward anyway, just because that corner pocket down there is blocked. Right. Yeah, that 9 ball is going to be kind of a weird... A weird ball to negotiate as well. Zinging down table. One thinks that he was probably trying to get on the 11 ball there and over, overdid it. Yeah, he got a lot out of that. He does ball. have a combination here, and he's going right at it, and he's going to pop this hard enough that the 9 ball then goes in and disturbs the 8. Roll yeah, the dice a little bit, a little bit of luck, and he's going to end up perfect. He's got to hit this with some speed, though. Oh man! Yeah, the does he there. have? That's, does uh, he have a shot on that? And nine that's ball. where rolling the dice a little bit, but it looks like he came out good. That nine ball goes. Yeah, that was that was awesome. That, that was, was a, yeah, beautiful, beautiful combination shot. to break those out. Where you use the first ball in the combination to go in, and so many, so many times is the way. He was trying to kill that ball to stay on the ten. He used inside English to sort of drag the cue ball back. And when you miss time a shot like that, you end up missing it. Yeah, it was definitely not. You know, he was pretty fortunate to get a look at the nine ball after breaking them out like that. Yeah. Um, but he shot, and he got down and shot at that nine ball so quickly. Oh yeah, you can tell he was confident. You know, in the in the considering shot. it was a sort of a brand new position that you didn't really know exactly how you were going to be sitting. Yeah. Um, and now Robbie's got a figure out how to break up the three and the six let's see he doesn't really have anything near it so he's really gonna have to put a stroke on whatever he uh yeah. decides to do to get to get to that he can do it now see so, yeah, he could have done that he could have done it there and really put yeah, some juice into considering it considering the shot he did shoot you might wonder why he didn't because then you end up with the one afterwards yeah but let's see if he draws it now What's nope the what is the plan here? He's really taking his time he with dropped, uh, he drops his head. that problem ball, the, that little cluster. Well, you he's know? left himself a thin shot on this two ball. He wasn't planning on this angle, but honestly, if you sneak this two ball in with outside English, doesn't that just send the cue ball into those two problem balls? Yeah, I I don't mind that. You know, it. I don't think you can scratch from that angle off of the three into the side either, so I do like that. But you're you're always taking that gamble because you don't know where you're gonna get a shot. You take that two ball and the eight ball, ten ball is a big blocker for yeah, the seven there. Look at that. He's playing like he was on the three ball there. I don't know. Maybe in the, the side. Overhead, the overhead, oh yeah, the three goes in the side. He Does got it? yeah, he got on the three ball on the side. If you look at I'm it, not even, looking at the overhead, I'm not even sure about that. The other view kind of looks like it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. If I'm looking at it on the on know, straight on view, he I've, played like it must. So he know. I mean, he was at the table, so he knows. But he's not going to get there. He's not. Uh, he's not going to have a chance at that three ball here. I don't think. This is just a center ball roll up for the side pocket. Yeah, Robbie just kind of let that one go. 
He's beautiful on the eight ball to pull within two. It'll be a two rack game here. Nice out by Mr. Jeremy. Well, Robbie's still got a lead going here, but uh, it's it's diminishing. Yeah, yeah, and we both know that these, uh, you know, I've seen where Jeremy can start to get on a tear. I think the one we commentated last time, he won like four in a row. Yeah, a breaking run. Uh, yeah. That's Jeremy, you know, eight ball's his favorite game. Uh, if there's anyone who plays really good patterns in eight ball, it's Jeremy. Uh, yeah, man, I definitely agree. He was really impressive in that state tournament. I learned a lot about his game, and he plays really solid, plays it real simple. You know, he doesn't overdo the cue ball. He really controls it real well, and he, we definitely got a chance to see him, you know, pull back into this match. But we'll see how he hits the break. Here. Now, his break so far, the cue ball never makes it to the side rail. He hits it square enough. Um, and you have to hit it really accurately for that to happen. See if he carries that on. And there it is. Okay, it made it finally to the side rail. So you, do, if it gets to the side rail, you've eventually you're going to end up scr start scratching. But uh, somewhere when you when you hit it solid and square, it can't it can't scratch. Yeah, he came up dry as well. So we got Robbie at the table. But it looks pretty ugly. This is not one of the better layouts. You got the four twelve. Yeah. And what is that? The thirteen next to the eight for the stripes. You might con you, really you gotta you gotta play solids here because that's your only starter as well. So I I feel like we'll see him take the solids. You might. Would you consider if you can see it? I don't know if he can or not, but I think he can. From this position, the. Uh, 12-4 combination on the four ball all down the rail. Oh, I would definitely have considered that if I could see it. Yeah. Like that would solve your only problem on the up, table. Open up solids. Does the two go by the 15 MH? It looks like it does. Yeah, it's close. Yeah, if actually looking directly at the table, I'm certain it does. Oh, um, okay. But he's got an angle on the nine ball, on the, on the six ball here. It might not be quite as much angle as he'd like, because he's going to have to hit this ball pretty hard. To get the cue ball into the four ball now. Stunning right over. Punching it. Losing control. Trying to give it a little bit too much. Yeah, he really had to pound that ball. And kind of force the issue. Get get enough on it to uh, break those balls out. He really he overcut that ball. But he would have had the speed, I think. Even if he did make it. So I think he hit it with good speed, but when you're yep. trying to get the cue ball dance that much off a pretty straight ball, obviously you tend to overcut that ball trying to force the angle a little bit when it's yeah, not Yeah, and his there. saving grace by missing it by so much is he also missed the breakout, and that means that problem on the side rail is Jeremy's problem now. Absolutely. So he does not have a shot on the 13, it doesn't look like. I think he was might have been planning on it. He's got to create some kind of break shot here, and he would hate to just shoot the ten ball in somewhere just because it's his only ball and not break, you know, not break this ball out. He does, of course, potentially have just a simple bank shot on the purple twelve if he can get on it. Uh, he doesn't have to break these out. Yeah, it's really double kissy that bank on the twelve. So I take it back about him not having a shot on the thirteen. It looks like he's spinning the ball. He might be bending it a little bit. Nope, you were right. Clipped off the eight, didn't go. He clipped that eight pretty heavy, too. But look at where those balls ended up, man. He kind of tied, up, okay, tied yeah. up that eight ball again, right. you know. And they left momentarily and then came back. Yeah, I'm not sure if that eight goes in the, either of the top pockets still. So he definitely still didn't necessarily open up the rest of the rack for Robbie. No, isn't it? Four ball's always a problem. Maybe... Take the three, get straight on the five, draw back off the five, straight into the 12-4. You have to get dead straight, though. Sometimes you can shoot yourself into trouble in eight ball. Push the bird out a little bit far, and every time you shoot one of these shots and then shake your head because you didn't quite get the right angle for whatever it was you were thinking, and start 
shooting yourself into a losing position. Yeah, he was going to leave that one ball down there for insurance if it doesn't go right. And yeah, see, I'm just not a hundred percent hoping a little oh, bit here, okay. isn't he? He wanted to play for the two next, which still doesn't. He's taking taking balls away to break out that four ball, so with no angle, you he can shoot the six now and put a little low outside, and cut it in, and try to. If he, even if out. he does do a miracle shot and somehow gets the four ball out of there, the eight ball is still surrounded by the stripes. Mm -hmm. And if that was your only problem, you'd go into it now. But yeah, finally it's time to stop making balls. That's not bad. No, it yeah, that was really hasn't left much constructive for Jeremy unless there's a bank on the fourteen. I don't know if he's got a path to the pocket or not. Yeah, even if there is, man, it's not. But the, knowing, yeah, knowing that the twelve and the four there is like you're not desperate here. Um, so really, what he was trying there, I think, was to make the two. Make ball. the two, yeah. yeah. Just get rid of your opponent's uh, pieces, as it were. Yep, yep. I like the uh, move, but we're gonna see a little bit of a chess match here yeah, in this his, rack. His next safety is gonna play off the ten and the fourteen just because he's messed them up a little bit. Okay, what's what's Robbie thinking here? I don't wow. mind that at all. That's actually really, really sort of quite daring. But he said, you know what? Open this up and you don't have a shot here. Exactly. Except he does that. have a bank shot on the 11 maybe. But uh, kind of seizing on the opportunity that those two stripes are froze together like that and don't go anywhere. Oh, He's got look. a thin, thin cut in the side pocket He's here. He's play this 10 ball off the floor. Is he going off of it? Cut it straight in, I think. Oh, what do a it. shot. Yeah, do a replay on that one. He just snicked, wow. it, snicked it straight in. We got something wrong going with the replay uh, as far as the live replay, you guys. So if you are interested in watching any of these highlights, we'll have a highlight reel up for you. Ah, uh, Jeremy. Hit it again. <laughs> so, yeah, it was funny, wasn't it? It didn't look like it was playing. It's not playing any of the uh, replays for us. No, no. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, we'll go well, here. Well, we'll still co collect them, and they'll end up on the highlight tape. Including that miss of Jeremy's there. Yeah, yeah, he definitely had a good chance to, to finish the rack there. No, Robbie's going to open up this eight ball, I think. No, not really, because it... Oh, okay, well, well, there it is. He did, but yeah, that's you know gonna, what? This that's is not no help. good. This is no good. He got, You got to leave yourself a shot, yeah. you know? Obviously, I don't think he meant to go into the six. Is he going to try and kick the three, the six ball in? He needs to make it. Is he just going to play a safety and roll up on it? Freeze on the back of the 11. I like that. Or oh, 13, I mean. It's pretty creative using your opponent's yeah, ball yeah, to very to, uh, difficult to get away with that kind of thing, and he's left a shot in the twelve. And you're always going to give him some kind of look at a shot, yeah, but not necessarily anything offensive. If you absolutely froze on that thirteen, you would stop this happening. Ooh, I, I almost thought the side pocket was, got him again. That was the perfect speed for that particular line. But he hits it good, and he's climbing back to make it a one. That was the only speed that ball would go in yeah. on the, on that line. It really wept its feet on the way in, too. But before you can blink, Jeremy says, look, there's no problems anymore. Everything's open. That means I'm just going to run out. And knock the wind out of Robbie here, who... I feel he was shooting maybe too quick or he just didn't. The thing about eight ball is it gets very complex in, in moments and you need to listen to your spidey sense. You don't want to, you don't want to limit yourself and slow down when you, when you've got a rhythm and Robbie definitely is kind of, he likes to get a rhythm and momentum going. Oh, absolutely. But sometimes your spidey sense says, Hey, you don't fully understand the details of this shot yet. You've got to spend a little bit, a little bit longer figuring it out. Make sure that you have a good plan, you know. You don't want to be shooting into, into nowhere, into abyss, where you get stuck with one ball and, you know, wide open table for your opponent because these guys don't miss at that point.
But it's 5-4. But Robbie's got a lot of drive. I don't think he's going to let himself be affected too much. He's going to come on strong in the next track, just like he has in the previous. Um, Jeremy, on the other hand, is going to be kind of a lot cooler. Cool, calm, collected, and very thoughtful. Let's see if he controls this break. Nice little pop there on the cue ball. Looks like it's going to be dry. Yep, it's dry. We got Robbie at the table. Maybe take a quick look at the overhead. He's going to get started on the solids here. Yep. I hope that means he's got a plan for the seven. Little tap here, a little bit harder would have been perfect. Yeah, it would have been real effective. And now he looks to the sky and says, why? Hmm. Let's see. He's got two, and that's going to lead him that down That was what table. he was playing. He was playing that a gentle little tap on the seven. Just on the a nine, nudge. On the nine to pump the seven out. And he hit it so soft. Just Not enough it, mustard. It didn't pop out. And right. that means plan B. It's hard to tell if he's touching that nine ball. If he's touching, he might not have an offensive shot. But it looks like he does. I thought he had the two ball at first look. Just going to take him to the... Uh, really, he's got options here. He got the five. Actually, I think that's his only real shot. Yeah, and the seven ball might go into two different corner pockets, kitty corner from each other. Um, only Robbie knows that. I haven't seen him study that yet, but I'm sure he probably glanced at it and knows the answer. Yeah. It definitely goes after, in the after top we left. Touched it. I don't know, Robbie. Well, let's see what Jeremy's got for stripes. Obviously, he's got the... The nine ball, a little bit of a problem as well, but that's going to go in the side pocket, I believe. I don't think that seven's cutting too much of the nine ball off for that. And the nine ball is going to go in the bottom right if he can get that six ball out of the way, or, or it might even pass the six ball. It's hard to tell from this angle. Is he crossing this ball, or is he going to play safety? Oh, he crossed it. Oh, yeah, banked it. Almost. Okay, Robbie. Head up. Take a deep breath. And you're very much still in this match, of course, because you are in the lead. And after the last few racks, which have been sort of torture for Robbie. It's yeah. Been, he's he's, he's really got been in control. Yeah, he's got to make sure that doesn't really change his uh, attitude here, which is usually good and aggressive. And um, I don't expect that to change. In fact, everything's open here except for that same old seven ball. But like I said, it might have two pockets once the six ball's gone. Getting on the six ball's kind of awkward. Yeah, because of where that seven nine is, you really want to be straight on the six to end up on the seven. But seven ball's kind of blocking that, you know, the seven nine's kind of blocking that. Yeah, so there he's looking to see the seven ball shoot down into that long corner pocket. Past the 11 on the way through. Correct. And if but he's getting there now, he'll just draw off of this six side rail back. Yeah. So this is going to be a little bit of a speedy shot. This is a pretty looking shot when you hit it good, though. He's hit it pretty good. Yeah. He'd like to have got more out of it, but he's still got a shot at this seven ball. I'll tell you what. If he's uh, you got to go for the seven he's now. On he's on it. He's just going to roll it in. This is a this is a tough back cut, you know, to a blind pocket. Yeah. I'll, more than half the table. Oh, and he's jacking up. What's he playing here? He's playing the five ball. Playing the five draw. Oh. He had to play a little mass A shot, and that's why he ended up not hitting the five ball solid as he wants. And guess what, folks? He's fluked his way under getting perfect on the seven. Does it go? Yes, it does. If he gets down and shoots this shot, he's looking like, yeah, he does. So the seven ball goes. He was trying to hit that five ball solid, and shoot the Womble, but uh, ended up perfect on the seven. Don't begrudge you a little bit of luck, Robbie, every now and again. You know what? He ended up a little bit awkward here. 
Yeah, the key here is make sure you make this one ball. I think if you, because you're saying you don't know if you're going to hit the 11 or not. Correct. Yeah, he's going to. He might have to put outside the bin on there. He did hit the 11 full in the face. Just give him a nice shot in the side pocket. Okay. Yeah, that could have ended up real funny, real quick. It was the same speed that would have, if he'd missed that 11, he would have ended up nicely on the 8. So it's tough to say which one of those he was playing. But uh, he hit that really, really well, so. He used the 11 there. Every ball is a rail. You know, we really need to get a new soundboard <laughs> with some new things. I, I don't know, know who said pressing, that one. Pressing those buttons. Definitely talk to a Chris G about that. I, I think we need a, a laugh track. Oh, like yeah? When you, when you make a little joke here in the commentary box and then you press the, oh, how mm -hmm. about just a little... A little giggle on that one, or maybe a big <laughs> laugh, hearty laugh on that one. There you go. Like a sitcom almost. Oh, wait. I do have one on my phone. Oh, there you go. All right. So we got Robbie jumping out to a 6-4 lead. Jeremy had an opportunity there to tie the match, but Robbie said, no, I'm going to keep this lead and keep on trucking. We'll see how he hits his break. Oh, balls fly everywhere. Cue ball gets kicked around. Did he make a ball? I think he must have. I think yeah. I heard one. He's go going back down. to the table with his with his shooting cue, so it doesn't look like there's that many balls on the table. What's that? One, two, three, four. Okay, not a stripes. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so we made a solid. Huh. Which really I like stripes here. I think you gotta go for stripes. Your first shot, I would play the 11 ball and kiss the two, and then stripes would be nice. He's got a sh potential shot. Yeah, he likes stripes too. Nice little nudge on the nine ball there to uh, to open it up a little does bit. Does that 14 just go straight past the two, does it? That's not a problem. Yeah, it looks like they aren't quite touching. Okay, so just a stop shot here then. Yeah. No problems on the table, really, at that point as well. Yeah, he's looking very nice in this run. That was a nice little stun run there to get the correct angle on the 14. Stun run through, very nice. Yeah, absolutely. It's really good. It shows really good control and touch when you can do that. Get it to run forward two inches after. Almost like a two-inch draw, you know. It shows a lot of expertise and cue ball control. But look at this. He's got a wide open rack from here. It would be interesting to see which out ball he uses. I don't think he'll use the nine. He'll take the nine now. Yeah, maybe that's why he's wincing. He's kind of making faces like he's not happy about something. But uh, maybe he did want to leave the nine. But the eight ball is kind of open. You just have to be sort of anyone over there in that window-ish. Yeah, yeah. Really, anywhere in the middle of the table is perfect. So, not too much work to do to get on the eight, but you still got to fall well. considering bumping into the back of the five to hold position? Why would he look at that? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Leave the five and the seven where you are, hey, they are, right? Absolutely. But if it helps you get out and you get out, you know, then that's a moot point. It's just a little risky, like you said. Yeah, all right. You might end up behind it. No. Okay, so he was looking just to do that. Well, I don't know. He was planning on a little tap there because that speed You're right. didn't help him uh, on the line he took. He was anticipating a little a little brush on the five. Fancy, so, Robbie, very fancy. Now you got to play the combo. And he doesn't, so he's not obviously not on the 12 ball. Otherwise, he'd have probably shot it already. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I think he got behind the yeah, 15. There you go. He lined out the combination. You know, they do look really lined up. Even looking at it down the down the barrel at the table, it looks really wind, lined up. Yeah, there's a lot of space between him. You're, and you're kind of out of the blue, but all the Robbie fans out there in the viewership are holding their breath because oh. need that one to go in. Yeah, that was a big shot. He's still got the lead in this match. Yeah, but this is a good chance for... 
Germany to pull within one again. Yeah, and breaking in. Bulls have not been, not a lot of bulls being made on the break. Uh, yeah. But that could change. Not too advantageous for either player right now. I would agree with you. And I think that's one reason why we see such a close match so far. If one of these guys ends up dialing in a break, you know, and getting a good rhythm on the break, we could see this match get out of hand real quick for one of the players. All right, let's see what Jeremy likes doing here. Oh, Tanyan out there says, props on the commentary. Best I've heard on a smaller channel. Oh, thank you. Tartanian. Uh, one of the... You know, Tartanian is like the fourth of the three musketeers. <laughs> really? Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, this is no easy... Does this combo go? Doesn't look like it. I didn't think so. And there we go. He got amazingly close and proved that it might have. There was a yeah. tiny little gap between those balls, and so he cut it super thin. And he put but, throw on that ball even more to try to straighten it out a little bit, which is the only reason. And he the throw kind of hurts you on that shot, doesn't it? He's trying right. to cut, you know, cut that ball super thin. And so, but, really... I mean, Robbie's got to be happy to be back at the table, but it's very tough for him right now to see a way to get out with stripes. Yeah, there's no, not even really a or straightforward safety. How do you safety. gain any kind of advantage here? You bank the 15, and then bank some kind of bank or something on the, on the 10. Well, they both bank in the same pocket if you're feeling frisky. That's a super uh, aggressive. All right. Well, and he's played it with a... I think that was more of a safety where he's trying to block uh, that pocket from the 7, 8, yeah, 4. Yeah, done absolutely none of the above, has it? It's just drifted out of the way and caused no problems at all. Yeah, really it, caused a problem for but him. But so. I mean, he knows even if he'd blocked that pocket, it really wouldn't have stopped Jeremy necessarily getting out using other pockets. Yeah, he's got all the pockets here. So... um. He's got a shot on the five ball here, and the five is very deep into the pocket. He doesn't like that. He's changing his mind. A long shot on the one ball. Yeah, when the five ball is that deep in the pocket, it's, it can be kind of tricky to uh, play, uh, play shape for your next ball because it kind of takes some funny bounces with the spin and uh, usually ends up dying unless you draw it out. you got to put a draw on those kind of shots. Where even if you don't necessarily make contact with draw, you can't necessarily put top spin because that rolls through the ball and through the rail and then dies after it hits the rail. So he'll want to be careful on this five ball. I and this is a much better angle. So you now he can hit the five ball nice and thin and lead the cue ball out to the middle of the table with uh, just a nice center ball. It shouldn't have a problem dying. Just like that. Nicely done. It looks like he's dead straight, so he might have to roll forward here about half a foot for the eight in the top left. There's another stun run shot for you, MH. Oh, he just rolled it straight through. Just roll through, yeah. You're right, though. You could have stun run that. I do. I like to play the stroke, man. I'm a nine-foot player, so I do let my stroke out a little bit more than these guys. They're, these guys are a little more tacticians and really don't put the cue ball in any under in any stress that they don't need to, you know. They like yeah. rolling it. Dan Hadina out there says, thanks for the stream, guys. J-Fed is in a funk. Robbie needs to capitalize, and that's right. If Robbie, Robbie could have taken a few of those racks back and be, been well ahead in this match, he still got the lead. Um, and Dan Hadina, of course, uh, has, got, has got the loudest voice in pool. Really? Yeah. In fact, uh, while he was writing that that message, I could hear him before he po before he posted it. Yeah, I like it. But he's right. You know, Robbie ha does have definitely a chance to win this match. Um, he's got the firepower to do it. Well, like I said, I think it's whoever catches on rhythm on the break first. So this is a big shot for Jeremy. Yeah, there's been a lot of dry breaks so far. Bulls tables are open up really well. 
It's like you're sort of hitting the break there great because they're all opening up good and you're controlling the cue ball well. There's but a, for some reason, nothing's going into the pocket. The old patented hand Which flip after the, that the one. Worst thing you could do, just hand a nice chance over to Robin. Let him know that he's still got a chance in this match. Let him know that after this next rack, it doesn't have to be tied up if Robbie says so. All right, let's let's see if he says so. Jeremy, I'm not. I don't think I did see the foul. What, what did you see happen? You're saying, uh, Jeremy Gould, did you guys catch the foul that Jeremy had when he shot that seven-five combo? No, I definitely didn't see it. In that last rack, 7-5 combo. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe double double hit it or something. Well, neither Jeremy or Robbie caught it either, I don't think. No, yeah, they definitely didn't because he didn't take ball in hand. So you saying that he moved it with his cue afterwards, huh? Well, that would not be a foul. Wait, no, the seven ball was involved in the combination. So yeah, if you I think it would be. Cue, yeah. Don't know. How sure are you, Jeremy? We'll have to watch the uh, replay on when it yep. comes out on YouTube. Absolutely, yeah. When we stop this, and it actually, should upload. Everyone at home can, can go back right now and watch it, in fact. Rewind it, yeah. I could crack open my phone and figure it out. But meanwhile, we got Robbie here at the table running the... Uh, looks like he's playing the stripes. Kind of got in a funny position here. Trying to get behind the whole pack of those balls and ran into the 15, which really didn't hurt him too bad. He blocked that pocket pretty good. As well as moved that 15 to a position to where he can break that cluster out later in the rack. If he ends up kind of where he is right now, he'll have a good, good opportunity to open that pack up. <laughs> All right, Jamie. We I guess we uh we gotta go with what you're saying. But MH is double checking it right now. Good roll there from Jeremy on the solids. He's got that two ball to negotiate. The one ball is very possible right now to take care of that problem. Well, but. I've just uh, watched the replay. Uh, about that point that Jeremy Gould says, uh, and he definitely does. He uh, he shoots the combination, the seven ball comes off the rail, swipes the side of his cue while it's in transit, and completely changes the direction that the seven ball goes. And uh, somehow, Jeremy Gould is the only person who noticed it. <laughs> yeah. But that's absolutely true. Good eye, Jeremy. Yeah, I'll show you. Mr. Uh... J Fed here. It's not a, it's not a foul if the uh, your opponent doesn't call it. Yeah, yeah. So in the end, it was deemed good by Robbie, and Robbie, of course, has no idea. Oh wow! Yeah, that's huge. That is huge, and that's one of those where you know that that happened, you know. But. <laughs> Like you said, nobody catches it. It's not a foul. And uh, Jeremy broke those balls up nicely, but I always kind of had second guesses about how that two ball was going to break out if he did end up breaking out because it was going towards the 15. So it's always going to be tough to get it open. Uh, he had a good angle on the one or the five, which he used the five. Um but it just kind of, it was never easy to get that two ball free, and it's still not. And that two ball doesn't necessarily bank, so it looks like he might try to play like a rail first end of the 15. That's what he's calling. Wow. This is a big shot. This it's is a huge shot, and this 15 is so far away from the pocket that it's tough to imagine this actually dropping. And the rail, yeah, the 15 is not like, Close enough to the rail, really. Yeah. That two ball's coming into it really heavy like that. See, it always wants to push 
passed. Really, you got to shoot that. That's a just a tough shot, you know. You got to hit that perfect speed so that you get the right bounce off the 15 and send it straight to the pocket. But and it has to pick up full roll on that strike ball. Exactly, yeah. Enough that it, by the time it gets to the, to the rail. It's really, really, I really don't think that shot was necessarily there. He was just trying to force the issue a little bit, I think. Okay, advantage Robbie. Yeah, huge advantage. He's got an open table. This could put him back to a two-game lead where Jeremy's really, he's battling to uh, to take that lead from Robbie, but just can't quite seem to tie it up. It's a real good, good match so far. Uh, both players are grinding real hard and making each other pay for mistakes. Yeah, and it's tough to predict who's going to win this match. I mean, the Still. Fargo ratings and the if there were bookkeepers and people betting, you know, you'd you'd have to say that Jeremy, of course, is favorite. But uh, uh, all you have to do is miss one shot to turn the match and uh, uh, give Robbie a chance to run out, and uh, the rating don't mean nothing. Yeah, absolutely. What matters here is does he get out of this rack? And both these guys, neither of them seem out of it, you know. Like they're obviously it's a close match, and none, both of them just look real hungry at the table when they get an opportunity. Yeah. You and know? I don't see either of them uh, talking themselves out of playing aggressive. Yeah. Um, they can, they, Robbie's going to go at it. Jeremy's going to go at it. Yeah, we've seen we've seen quite the grind so far, so we're definitely in for a good second half. Stop the cue ball there, Robbie. Oh, wow. I oh, still uh, there was uh, no need for that at all. It really was a very simple position, wasn't it? But he thought he was just going to punch it in and control it. And a little more angle. To know where'd that angle come from? Popped it out sideways. I mean, you could hit that shot a lot softer. I'm still being there. Just wanted to make sure he didn't roll forward. That's all. Right. Or he's, stay on the he's rail. Still got a recovery here. This you can is, get through to the 13. And with hit, oh, too thick. Ah, uh, Robbie, that was a big one to give up. He was definitely favorite to run that rack too. When you saw the ball stripes all in the open, and it's close, but I'm pretty sure that eight ball goes. Oh yeah, get a bust through there. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. The overhead view shows you. Yeah, there's plenty of room, but you got to make the ball to start with, though. That's for sure. Let that one overcut a little bit on him. I overcut that ball when I put too much top spin on it. I feel like I get a little natural, natural throw and or throws it out of the pocket a little bit. Jeremy Gould says that he thinks that J Fed actually did point out the fact that he hit that seven. Oh, okay. uh, he may have said something to Robbie, and Robbie just decided to carry carry on shooting. All right. Well, he doesn't have anything easy here. You have to hold for the cue ball on either of these stripes that you want to start with. And tough to negotiate the hit on the 8 if you do start, start with 13. But he might try to draw into these balls, which is dangerous. Watch out, 8 ball. And I blinked. I was down there looking at the uh, chat there and uh, noticed that Robbie's still back at this table. So J-Fed... Gave that one up, did he? Yeah, he missed his first shot back at the table. Wow. He started with the and four huge, ball. And he huge reprieve for Robbie, so he doesn't have to get punished for that little slip there in that last rack. He can carry on as if it didn't happen. Yeah, I think that's the first time in the match we've seen a mistake going punished like Jeremy, that. And Jeremy would have been tied up for the first time since 0-0. Zero, zero. But none of that. Robbie won't have it. He's going to take a two-game lead yeah. back to 7-5. Actually, Jeremy took the first game, didn't he? Robbie had the first game, and he blew it. Jeremy took the first game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Robbie bounced back, and two, two games later was in the lead. Yeah, that was, that was a big a big let off from uh, Jeremy. You know, he really let Robbie away with that one. Had a good chance to make him pay. 
And like you said, for the first time since the first second rest, since, tie the since match. one one, yeah, it was one one. But uh, it's a small margin when you're racing all the way to fifteen, and we Robbie is almost at his halfway mark already. Okay, I'm not sure. Yet another He's dry break. Sitting down, so it's it's going to be open for Jeremy. Do you see anything starting on the solids? Because obviously the stripes has got a starter. No, the three ball into the long corner is a tough shot. Yeah. You like solids, do you? Yeah, I guess solids look nice. I think solids stripes look better. Difficult, so but Jeremy says no. I'm just take the fifteen. Yeah, the that three ball is possible, though, isn't it? It's the longest corner. Yeah, I think yeah. But, but actually, if the nine ball goes past the eight ball and past those other two balls into the corner, that, that it's tricky, though, so. isn't it? You still got to get on the other stripe, correct? Into the other corner. So I'm curious to see how he. Well, and he's that, tying balls up that while was a we little go. Kiss, kiss that wasn't part of the plan. You can still get short side and play it upstream. Yeah, and actually, with where he's on the 11 and the fact that he can roll forward now for that ball next to the two, the strike ball. Yep. Uh, and the nine ball looks like it goes all the way past the 14 into the, its long corner. Oh, okay. So he can just roll this 11 ball in and get those two out of there, and it's looking pretty nice. Uh, of course, he can't really do any of that until he's decided, what are you going to do with the 13? The 13 does have one pocket that it can go into. Well, I like yeah. the pattern you were talking about there, MH. Roll up on the uh, 12 ball or whatever that ball is, and then roll that one up for short side on the 9, and then that's going to give you the 14 in the same pocket as the 9 to get to the 13 short side. Yeah, the 13 all the way down. 11 ball's got to be gone then, but whistling past the 11 if the 11 was there. Yeah, I don't and mind the that nine pattern ball, And the 9 ball then be your last ball before... <laughs> Or the eight ball. Will be interesting to see if he takes that route. Because really, that looks well, straightforward to me. That seems to be what he's doing here. I think you'd wanted to be straighter on this twelve ball, wouldn't you? Yeah, this is a little tricky running into the two. A little brush on it just to hold hold the right angle, and that turned oh, out, that was perfect. That was beautiful it was touch. A well controlled little kiss. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so now he's got this 14, and I'll just roll this ball in, see? Yeah, that was the correct pattern. It, it looked pretty straightforward. I'll just roll yeah, this yeah, in. Okay, go. you got to get your speed right here to get nice and Two straight, rails. straight mm -hmm. on this long 13. He did. He got straight enough. And actually, you, he's on the right side of straight here, doesn't it? So he can naturally get out on the 8. Yeah, and that 7 ball looks like it's a blocker, but I don't think it's blocking too much. As yeah. long as you don't go forward on this 13 and kind of stun off of it and stay, keep the cue ball kind of where it's at, I think it'll be fine. So that needs to bounce, and it did, and it did. Bounced out beautifully, and he's straight in, so that was really, really into good pattern. And he pulls it back in within one. We still got to grind, folks. Yeah, Robbie's going to be careful here. I keep saying it. Whoever figures out the break first is going to run away with it because both of you guys are playing pretty solid beyond that. Yeah, and that's not been working well so far. Right. If uh, anybody takes a big advantage on the break, I really see. I feel like that's going to change any minute now. Yeah. JFed can't have yet another wide open dry break which is really the only reason Robbie is still in it because Jeremy gave away a couple racks and you know at the end of the rack early in the match and uh and then was breaking dry for Robbie to come in and clean him up as well so Jeremy dials it in I think I think we might see a turn of the tides He's giving himself more angle. He doesn't like the way the balls are really just sort of not threatening the pockets. So there, he played a cut break there. The cue ball 
he's changed what he was doing there. And although it's a sort of a more ugly break and at first glance didn't open up as well, guess what? A ball went in and it's pretty open. Yeah, he hit the second ball. Break, which just opens the balls up so nicely. He just doesn't seem to produce any balls. And a lot um, of people will uh, say that, you know, you do end up with clusters more on the uh, two ball break. But in my experience, sometimes I feel like when I'm hitting the two ball break good, I get a good spread. And and if I don't make a ball, they kind of clump up. Whereas if I do make a ball, they kind of spread out nicely. So I used it the second ball break. I like the third ball break now. I think it just sort of twists the whole geometry of everything more. Yeah. And it's more random. Yeah, definitely. That's when you start getting that two rails in into the back of the pack with the cue ball angle. So it looked at first glance like he had played a good shot there, that combination there, but I think that he really probably was trying to stay down a little bit for a shot. He does still have a shot on the thirty on the eleven. Um but this thirteen and ten ball kind of in the middle of the table um are kind of awkward. Yeah, that's the big issue. I think he might have been trying to get on the ten ball actually in that last shot and the seven balls just stopped him. Well, if he can get through to the 11, he can get to the 10. And you play a little bit of a draw off that, yeah, that right. side and rail. He, yeah, he's not going for it, though. He's going to play another combination. And so it, he drew back for a shot on the 13 in the side, and he hit that position absolutely perfect. And, of course, hitting it that hard meant he... Ro Rolled the dice a little bit on the resting spot of that nine ball, which was the ball he shot into that combination. Yeah, he got But he hit fortunate. it with speed because it was his only way to draw back and get on the 13. Definitely, I feel like he got a little fortunate that nine ball didn't end up funny. And that position on the 13 has allowed him to unpick this. Oh, yeah, now he's in a good looking spot here. That was a good shot. You know, it opened up the rack for him. So. Are we going to see our first tie ball game since 2-1-1, the second rack? He's like to be in straighter on this not temple. Right, now he's trickling down yeah, towards the kind four. Of, kind of on the wrong side of straight here. Yeah, I'm not sure if he can roll through that ten ball enough to end up where he's not hooked on the four. Yeah, four, just a natural rolling shot is not going to do it here. And really, if you're not, you're in kind of trouble because it's tough to get. If he can hit that same that follow shot on the ten, but with more speed to go through the gap and off the bottom rail and back up and hit the four from the other side, but he doesn't like it. Yeah, and you can't play. Sh you can't even like run into the nine ball and play short side because where the two so he's ball digging is. Digging down on the cue ball here. He's going to go around the other side of these solids, singing it around with. It's a spin. Oh. How's your luck? Not a favorable little snick on the four ball. A fuller face kid on the four ball would have been nice. Um, but he snicked it just on the wrong side. Yeah. To let the four ball stay in between them. But uh, that was never easy. Was it? A nice little draw shot with a lot of zing on that cue ball i like this he's gonna try to lock the cue ball behind that oh, wow. nine. well that's a sort of a desperation but. super negative shot because in a tactical battle robbie does not have to give him anything here yeah absolutely robbie's not. got robbie's got no pressure on him to do anything with this next shot uh and if he thinks about shooting balls in and getting out it better involve a good break shot and get out because if he doesn't get out here uh, I'm going to have to say, hey, Robbie, why didn't you play some kind of safety? Right, right. No need to if he gets out, though, and getting out's better. Well, it's just the worst thing would be not getting out. I just don't see anything too easy. Right. He hasn't sold out yet. Before. He's still got plenty of solids on the table to change his mind. But he's also got a couple of break shots. Uh, you know, the one ball could be popped in, and the stun angle goes towards the nine and the four. I know he likes to shoot, and there's, oh, and he's playing safe on himself now. Freezing Ooh. up on the back of the seven. It's okay, Robbie. He's still not desperate. Solid still has a hefty advantage here in this tactical battle. 
Yeah. He's still got a shot on the seven ball if he really wants it, and it doesn't sell out because the nine ball is pretty well hidden as long as he makes sure he doesn't accidentally give him a window. He's um, not even not no, even messing with no, it. There's no need to go at it. He's not desperate. Jeremy's going to try and basically play the same shot he played previously, which is just touch the nine and keep those two frozen together on the after one rail. Just absolute dead weight. I'm sure they probably checked. Nine ball's not frozen. Okay, that'll do nicely. Still advantage solids. Yeah, absolutely. And he's got a good angle on the three ball to go if he wants. Rob, if you want to break these out, why don't you do it with ball in hand? Not yeah. In. Send the cue ball up table. Let Jeremy keep trying to make that kick shot until one of the, you know, until eventually he doesn't. There's no pressure on Robbie right now unless he starts running balls and he's going to put pressure on himself. The only question is, how do you get ball he in He just wants to pound this three ball in and break these out and be done. And he, and if he does it, then, you know, I can't say it was wrong, but three ball goes past the seven. Cue ball hits the nine. I think he'll be patient. I, um, there you go. There you yeah. go. Don't leave him a bank shot on the nine ball, though. That's all. Make sure you get behind these. There you go. Plenty of things, good things can happen for Robbie here. And what he did there was he took away that little soft kick a little bit. He can still do it now, but the cue ball is always going to get, a, yeah, get it out. It doesn't look like Jeremy's got any offensive options here. So, again, he's going to try and play a super negative, try and freeze these balls together. I don't Make think sure that nobody can get out. I don't but, think. Oh, see, there uh, you there go. There it is. Eventually it had to, you know, keep making him play that shot. That's where he'll start. He really doesn't even have to move the cue ball. I think he'll okay. start with the four ball. Yeah, no need to break it out now, is there? Just shoot the four ball straight in the long pocket. Yeah, I think that's what I would do. It'll be interesting to see if he breaks it out because it's, it's uh, definitely there, like He's you said. Go into it. You have the correct angle to do so. And you always have the seven ball as an insurance ball if you do want to break it out right now, you know? Yeah. I don't see you falling bad on the seven if you end up trying to want to break right. it out. Like this. Luckily, he's still got balls on the table and still no pressure on Robbie. Play another safety. He doesn't have to. He's probably going to go at this. He's got a beautiful little angle on the seven ball. So I think he's going to keep shooting. Yeah, this is the ideal. Now you've got to make sure the seven ball goes in so you maintain control. Even if you miss the kick, do not kick it out and miss the seven. You had to make the seven ball. All your focus is on, the, on that cluster, isn't it, and where you're going to hit it. And... My spidey sense was going off saying you had to make have to make sure you make this ball to stay in control. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And that's that's probably something and a lot the, of people all don't the safeties realize. don't matter if you just blow it when you break it out. Now it's not exactly a total blowout. He's got he's given Jeremy a bank shot. Which is it doesn't look like he's guaranteed shape on the eight if you do play that bank either. Yeah, he's gonna spin, he's around, going. spin around the table. This'll be pretty. So, Oh, he did have enough angle. Oh, look to at stop that. He was it. able to stop it. That was a great shot. Yeah, really good. So, and that's how you blow a tactical advantage. Because really, Jeremy could only hope. Jeremy had nothing. He had no control in that rack. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he just had to hope and wait. And he ended up giving ball in hand. Um, uh, you can see Robbie's going to go take a little bit of a breather yeah. real quick. Go. Go wash that one off in the bathroom. Just can't make out exactly what he mouthed there as he whipped his hand across the table and ran off. <laughs> Take another look at a little bit of, about Jeremy here. Like you said, he's playing the T T Gray Emerald Tiger. T Gray. Is that they just they they just mis misspelled tiger? <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll just go with it that they did. Oh, it that's right. awesome! It's the new T Gray em Emerald <laughs> from Tiger. There you go. You playing with a Viking? Uh, I wonder. Oh, okay. It's the uh, white carbon. I'm having this weird deja vu moment right now, man. <laughs> white carbon spelled W H Y T E. Why do I feel like I've had this conversation before? You got Robbie's uh, bio there. Yeah, I do. 
Robbie from Kokona, Wisconsin. Age, 31 years. Shirt size, double XL. Favorite players of Larry Neville. The one and only Larry the Truth. He's playing with a 12.9 Revo carbon fiber with the Predator Q. Those Revos are real popular these days. He plays with the Predator medium tip. Uh, he's a nine ball. He likes rotation, so he's kind of like me. I'm more of a rotation player myself. Yeah, this match so far is a bit of torture for Robbie. He knows that last rack. Says he, he's been playing for 14 years, and we got Jeremy over here playing for what he says is 41 years. So if you take 14 and flip it around, you got the uh, number of years Jeremy's been playing. Kyle, I'm going to go grab my coffee. No so uh, tell everyone a joke while we're away, would you? I can't think of anything funny like you, man. But I'll keep them. I'll keep them entertained All for right. you. I'll keep the crowd warm for you, bud. What's What's green and spongy? What is that? What's my joke? What's green and spongy? Yeah. What is it? What is it? A green sponge. I, I knew it. Brown and sticky. Uh -huh. Let's see. Yeah, he'd be playing since he was two, standing on a bucket. I do agree, Sean. I think he should have probably looked at that four ball short side when he had ball in hand. Don't need to necessarily take a chance on breaking it out if you can make it without having to run into balls. Uh, I think that's kind of a general rule of thumb when you're running the balls is don't... Uh, don't move any balls that go. And really, uh, if you got a chance to to make it straight in, go ahead and do that. What's up, Bob? How you doing today or tonight? We got the Kings Hill going on here, you guys. Right now, we have a tie ball game at 7-all. Uh, Jeremy started off a little bit slow. Nothing like too crazy, but... Made a couple early mistakes to give Robbie a chance and take a couple game lead. I think he had a 5-2 uh, lead at one point, and Jeremy really has just been grinding ever since just to claw his way back into this match and make it a make it an interesting contest. There, uh, This is a two-man tournament for $1,000. It was 500 entry fee, so been playing for... For a little bit more than lunch money, and uh, they're both—they both—you can really tell they both want it. We got Robbie, the uh, five-time returning champ, and I believe last week, or two weeks, three weeks ago, I believe actually, because we've had a couple weeks off with the uh, Wisconsin State tournament and the Badger State tournament here. The last two weeks, so it was three weeks ago they last played, and Robbie really ran away with that one. But uh, Jeremy has something different to say. We're really getting a good match here. Let me know where you guys are from, where you're watching from. Thank you all for tuning in. Go ahead, like, share, subscribe. You got to subscribe to comment on the uh, live feed. So go ahead and subscribe so we can interact and talk to you guys. We do appreciate all the support. Everything we do here goes towards our junior program on Sundays. They play in the middle of the day during Sunday. And uh, any any revenue, any any profit we make goes goes to the kids. They get things like, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one help with uh, lessons, and they get tournament fees paid for if we can. We we uh 
like to take off their entry fees for them. So everything we we do here is for them. We appreciate you guys' support. And we got Jeremy back at the table, so they're ready to put things back in action. Just and in time. Is back in the comedy box, so you can let the players know they can play now. Just in time. All right, so we'll see how this second ball breaks turns out for Jeremy this time. Oh, you know what? He played the head ball that time, I believe. Oh, I wish I could watch that one again. But, uh... Yeah, he's he experimenting did. around. Got to find something that works. He hit the head ball from the side of the table, which you don't see a whole lot in eight ball. You see that in nine ball, but... And he took that break at the opportune moment. Robbie was the one who really needed probably a change in attitude, but Jeremy and took the break and... Let Robbie stew. Look at that split, too. This is probably the best split we've seen. It looks like he made two or three balls. So I think he'll take the stripes here. Yeah, he's playing the 12 in the side. Oh, he played that with left hand uh, check side spin to hold the cue ball up. Check side. Yeah, check side. Yeah, played that real nice. Now he's got a, a good look at this combo. I think he's going to want to take that out earlier than later. Um, the 15 is not on the rails. So the combo is very makeable. He doesn't have to play a combination if he doesn't want to. He can get on the 15 using the 14. Absolutely. But Although it's tougher then to, cause you'd, you'd have an angle and you wouldn't be on the, on the 11 right away. So right. He, he is. He likes your combination. I think this just kind of makes the rest of the run easy. If you make it, and though, the, you got to make it. That's the reason people might not shoot that combination. Absolutely. Because it is missable with that gap between the between the balls. Yeah, you put a little bit of low trying to hold the cue ball, which makes that combo a little, well, a lot tougher, I should say. It's a little easier when you're rolling those balls in, center ball. I can definitely see the advantage of what, and the reason to want to shoot that combination. It sort of makes the position easier and... Makes the the ultimate lay of the balls is simpler after you do it, um, but it is missable. So Robbie's not wasting any time. He better not m mess this up now. He needs to make sure. I mean, he can play any speed he wants as long as he doesn't blow another one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is not a straightforward. Well, it's straightforward, but this is not an easy shot to get on the five or the four here. Uh, you really got to run through if you're running the thirteen. You can kind of jeopardize it, or wow. had to play a draw like that and make the shot really hard. Smoke is coming out of Robbie's ears right now. Yeah, he's not going to be happy with that one. And that's going to give Jeremy a good chance to take his first lead since the first rack. So the big turning point in this match this game could be. Really a... Uh, I don't see him making too many mistakes here. Jeremy, you were saying he was hitting the head ball. I, I thought for sure. I guess I didn't see contact. Uh, but when it, it just threw me off that he was breaking from the side and hitting the, hitting the head ball. But it seems to be working out for him because it doesn't look like... Robbie is going to yeah. have an opportunity back at the table here. Sean uh, Stay, Shay, uh, commenting on the previous rack, said that, you know, Robbie had ball in hand um, and he could have shot that one ball up the, ra up the rail and didn't have to break him out, which is kind of what we were thinking too. Yeah, it's, it's definitely what the player is comfortable with, you know. Um it wasn't necessarily an easy well, shot. If you pick away and you get out, no one can say it was wrong. But if you do miss and fall into trouble and everybody points out, you know, it was simpler the other way and you have to listen to them. Right. Yeah. And leaves it up for speculation. Out, yeah. You got, most of the time you do have to. And Jeremy looks like he's going to take his first lead of the match. I'm going to knock on wood and not say anything else until after he shoots this eight ball. Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Bob's your uncle, and Jeremy has his first lead since the first game, so 
we've really been seeing him battle the whole match, and it really starts to pay off now. Robbie slumped in his chair. Oh, you got to be deflated a little his bit. Brain melted. Knowing that you let that lead go, you had a 5 2 lead, and uh, you, you let. You let Jeremy back in it. But, I mean, he didn't necessarily let Jeremy back in it by any means. Jeremy's really been fighting for every every position that he's had and every opportunity he's had he's taken full advantage of. So, like I said, we start, are seeing quite the grind of a match here. And Jeremy hit those last, that last break beautiful. We'll see how he gets gets this one to connect. So he's what? You're saying he's hitting the head ball from there? Yeah. 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 That's what Jeremy Gould was saying in the chat, too, that he is hitting the head ball. See? You betcha. You just don't see but, that a lot. But it's sort of a cut break where he kind of lets the cue ball fly sideways. Exactly. And this has probably gone from and, the... And that last one did work for him, but this one didn't. Correct. I was just going to say that we. I feel like we went from the best break in the last game to the worst one in this one because this is... The only saving grace for that one is uh, they don't open up good, so you haven't completely given a nice, easy roadmap for your opponent. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is kind of a mess of a rack. And Robbie's so. got to make sure that he stays in this game mentally. He's had some disappointments. He's had some frustrations. None of that makes any difference to what he's going to do now, hopefully. He's, he's going to plan on popping these balls out from behind. A little snick this ball in and bust the bust the pack up. Would like to have gone into that more full. Well, it was pretty effective. It it was it it got the the eleven out, which which really wasn't as straightforward as it as it looks. There's a lot of ways that eleven can get kind of jammed up and stay in there. Yeah, and it's interesting though that the thirteen and the eleven do both have that pocket after the fifteen is gone. It's tough to kind of thread the needle and get the 15 gone first and then get on those other balls. Right. He just doesn't have good ways to get in there. Yeah, he's and definitely nothing straightforward. None of that helps the 14. You may end up con having to play a combination on the one of those stripes onto the 15 and at the same time bust the 14 out. That's just what he's thinking about there. That's kind of, I think that's a lot. Of asking a lot. Well, He's got to do something. And, yeah, he was trying to pop out square, bounce off that end rail and then the side rail, but he, too much draw kind of just kept that cue ball up there. Yeah, I'm not sure he has anything offensive here. I mean, he can be super aggressive and play a combo. He's probably calling the 15. Not a bad result. In fact... Yeah, he's he's completely hooked on on the solids, isn't he? Yeah, he's got an edge of the three ball, but I don't think. Oh, you're right. I don't know. He's getting down pretty quick on it, so he may have this in the side pocket. If not, he's just going to roll up table. Yeah. Okay, so we'll probably see a combo. Another go at the combo here, huh? Still leaves the 14 as a big problem for Yeah, because, I mean, Robbie was kind of lucky out of the blue to leave that, that safe. Uh, it's not going to be safe if he misses again. No, no, it's definitely not. Jeremy does have the six ball tied up to the yep, 14. and so the seven doesn't, doesn't look that nice for solids either. Not necessarily a bad time to play a safety or right. kind of know that you do have a little bit of insurance letting Jeremy back to the table. Yeah, he just likes to shoot at everything, doesn't he? That that ball needed to hang up, oh, too. Oh, the 15 went in. No, that's no good. He's completely hooked himself. Oh, yeah. He's Got rid of all his balls. He made two balls on that shot. He's in a bad spot here. This is going to be tough to get away from. Yeah, very difficult to. And you can see he's not happy about it at all. How do you not give Jeremy control of this wreck? Pretty tough to see how Robbie doesn't just sell out here. Yeah, or even get a hit. You know, really, you want to kick at the 11, which has got a good chance of breaking up that 14-6. 
unless you play it with no speed. Really, it looks like he's trying to tie this two ball up or something. Oh, no. Okay, he had the bank. What a shot. Yeah, but it was his opponent's ball, so he just... Oh, okay. He, he was always giving ball in hand there. I'm not sure what he wanted to do with that 15, man, really. I don't think he had anything, really. Uh, he's basically given exactly what he knew he was give, this, giving him, which is ball in hand. I think he was just trying to take a pawn away from him to, for, yeah. from breaking out that six. And uh, that may six, just not be enough to help you win the rack, Robbie, I'm afraid. It might yeah. be all you all you had. Right. But I just don't think it's enough. It's not over yet, of course. Jeremy has to do something here, and he's got a shot on the seven. Yep, he's going to roll through these and try to get that six freed up. Oh, he didn't. I don't know what the plan is. And again, I bet he's got a plan here, because if he doesn't, he's just shooting himself into trouble. No, we know that's not the case. He's going to maybe just try and get a nice angle on the one ball here to break the six. There it is. Yeah, maybe this is nice. Angle, yeah, right? this is real good. And, and with the three ball over the side pocket, he's got a really good chance if he taps these balls apart, uh, having a chance to get out. And the six ball stays nicely in a position where it can go in the side pocket. I don't think it quite... Oh, oh, yeah, he's only got half a pocket, the six ball, if he's looking at the corner. Don't really want to shoot that. And I feel he, like he he's on it now, so just should roll it into the side oh, pocket yeah, and be done. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was going to say he kind of looked up and walked up to that six and aimed, you know, eyed it up past the 11. And that's a good look... shot. We're going to hit hit that button so it goes out of the highlight tape because it was a thin, small angle into the side pocket, but he did use a lot of inside English uh, to get the cue ball to come back the way he wanted it. And that makes that shot very missable if you mistime it. And he didn't. He, he hit it perfect. And we would like Jeremy to take a two-game lead over Robbie here. So late in this match, later in this match, we're a little over halfway done. Yeah. He, uh, he really starting to Starting to pull away a little bit. There's another pretty out from Jeremy. Both guys are playing pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, Robbie's obviously kicking himself for his missed opportunities, and he could be, uh, you know, and obviously this is usually true for anybody, but if I'd just taken those chances in those racks, I'd be well ahead now. Um, none of that's going to help, but I uh, I have a feeling he's going to, you know, he's he's played enough. And he's been in ma tough matches. Uh, is the money going to make any difference? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, not to these guys. He's I gonna, feel like they're probably used he's to He's going to stay, stay strong and uh, be dangerous, but uh, that doesn't mean he's going to come back and win. It really depends on what Jeremy lets him have. Absolutely. I definitely think Jeremy's in the driver's seat now. I mean, he really had to grind for it at the beginning of that match, and he did. He's still so, not really found a break that he likes yet. Absolutely, yeah. So we'll see how he hits this one. Actually, we'll we'll look at this one from straight on. See, there's a more of a cut break, like you were talking yeah, earlier. He really let the cue ball go there, and he got a little bit lucky that the cue ball stayed on the table. So but good. another dry one. Complex enough that it's a challenge for Robbie, and after everything that Robbie's gone through, he's still got to be an eight ball. Now, if this was nine ball, it'd be pounding away and trying to run his way back into it. But eight ball, you got to stop and think. What are you going to do now? You can't just blast away. Right. You right, have to have right a now. full end game plan before you really start. And this is not. This is another kind of ugly rack. This is a test of Robbie's maturity here. I mean, it looks like he's definitely looking to start with the stripes if he can. I just don't really, not sure I see a good starting ball there. The stripes? Yeah. Does that 13 go by the 5? Um, I don't think I so. Mean, that's I mean. a 3-14 combination. We could jump the 14 in. Jump the 14 in. Play the ten. You could play the ten fourteen, and 
and he uh, take uh, care of the ten ball and right. pop the what? And after the out. ten, after the fourteen goes, the ten ball goes into that same pocket that the fourteen goes in. Yeah. And then the eleven though is still an issue, isn't it? Well, if you shoot the ten fourteen right now, the cue ball is going into right. the one. Yeah. Played the three fourteen, missed the three fourteen. Yeah. So, I think I like. If I was going to be aggressive, I feel like I would have shot the uh, the ten ball and try to break it that eleven out and have a nice open rack. But he decides otherwise, and really, that's kind of I feel like that was an insurance move, where he's not necessarily splitting all the balls up in case he misses. Well, Jeremy's going to split them all up. He's definitely going to be. Well, he was trying. He was taking a little nudge on that eleven, wasn't he? That would have popped the one out nicely if he just. Snicked that 11 ball just now on the way through, but he missed it. Ended up okay. Ended up in a pretty fortunate spot where he can still negotiate something. The seven ball is a good break ball. Yeah. So he's giving himself a break shot on the two now if he wants it. Mm hmm. No. He likes the seven ball better, so just use the two ball to control, get on the seven. Yeah. Now he's going to go into him. The tough part now is there's less balls on the table to make sure you have a shot next. And plan B, you know, and plan C, he's only got three balls left. So, uh, and he needs another plan right here. He can bank the one ball and still get out. I like banking the one ball here. If you miss it, you got a chance to tie some balls up or own the pocket. And if you make it, you give yourself a real good chance to run out. So. Right. And even if he shoots these other balls and tries to get down table, there's actually no good pocket for the one ball unless, no. unless he banks it right now. And the yeah. bank played at speed. You know, obviously, if it doesn't go in, hang it a little bit. It's not going to help you that much, really, truthfully. But uh, if, if, Robbie, looking, if Robbie keeps his head... So he needs this ball to go in. I it's got a good chance with that fourteen way in there. It's kind of a big pocket off of the rail. So he can hit this one wide. Yeah, the fourteen could come into play. Just, Just like, like that. this. Wow. We'll definitely save that shot. Oh, what a shot. Yeah. Now he's got a real good chance to get out. That uh four ball goes by the twelve in that side pocket if he wants it there. Or it goes in the other side pocket. He's got a good angle for the six to go stun up to the four or roll through and play the four. Yeah, and Robbie's been on seven seven racks quite some time now. Yeah, yeah. He's come to the, it seems like ages ago that he's almost at halfway and he still hasn't crossed the halfway mark. So it this is, is beautiful from Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremy definitely went on like a four or five game run there where he was down two, battled back with And it's one. not like he's been breaking and running him. Robbie's had a, had a peek at, at all of these racks. Right. You know, it's just early mistakes, I think, in the rack where he's not giving himself the correct uh, pattern play to, to make the runs as easy as, easy as he would like. Bank the one now, Patrick Glitz. Oh, has. no. Wow. Massive moment in this match. I don't think we anybody expected that. Yeah, that's right. And that's what makes this game so tough is you have to keep your focus on every shot, not just most of them, not just the tough ones, every shot. And uh, he completely somehow didn't aim that ball. It was just so close to being in. Oh, you man. Almost think, almost think you don't have to aim it. And you were just saying, uh, Robbie hasn't won one. He's got a good chance now. And to stay in this, yeah. All of a sudden, you have to feel that he's got some momentum and know that he's still in this match. Yeah, that was a big miss. Breaking, and if he can get a break and a run, he can get tied up again. Yeah. Got to finish this rack, and he's playing quick. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I think he'll clear these balls fairly easily. And fourteen has to go before the eleven, doesn't it? Mm, yeah, I, you would prefer that, but I think if it doesn't, yeah, see, he's going to take it now. I think he might have been able to squeeze that 11 by. Obviously, you don't want to, though. Looks like he's really straight on this 14, which is not ideal. 
digging down. And it just drawing straight. Okay, F1. Oh, that was a good controlled. Oh, flirting with the temple there. Does he got a shot? Yeah, he's on the Yeah, 11. he's, he's okay. on the 11. Lucky. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. A slightly different contact on that temple. And it gets he's, he's, he's looking at a tough off-angle combination that he has to make. But instead, he's looking good. I think he'll draw this to the rail and out. Roll forward gently. Oh, okay. Yeah, he had enough. He had enough of a straight, straight enough angle. Okay, so he pulls back within one. There you go, big miss from Jeremy. Big miss from Jeremy there. That's I think that's the third rack where, really, he's made, he's kind of missed a ball like, with maybe that was his first miss eight ball, but I think he had a couple other racks where he missed one ball before the eight. And gave a real open table to Robbie. And that really is going to allow Robbie to settle his nerves and get back into this match. You know, take a couple of easy strokes. A nice easy pattern to get yourself back into this match. And So that could be another big turning point in, the, in this battle. Yeah, we've said several times already earlier in this match. If one of these guys starts actually breaking good, getting a good result, and still another dry break... Every time these guys break, it's always to their opponent's advantage. Yeah. Um, Robbie's and getting, these opened up nicely. Right. I was just gonna say Robbie's getting a better split than Jeremy when he uh, when he breaks dry too. So that's unfortunate for yeah. Robbie. Yeah. He's really given a lot of good starting looks for Jeremy to come and clean up his table. I think he's got to get on the nine ball in the side pocket here. Just like that. Beautiful. Yeah, that was really nicely done with the Now spin. he picks this off. The nine ball was really the only super tough ball to get on. He's still got that 11-12 to kind of worry about too. Yeah. But I think they'll both go in that pocket uh, as they lay. 11 and 15, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And 15 goes. The 11 ball has to then go in the same pocket that the 15 goes in. So he can use his 10 ball now if he wants. I don't know if he wants to leave the 14 up here, but he's got a nice angle on the 10 to get on the 15 nice and shoot the 10 and then the 11 into the same pocket and yep. dance around. He's got a couple options here to uh, take care of that problem. You know, you don't really like leaving the 14 up. Up here, but you're going to have to. Well, the way he's played that, and the way he's not upset about where he's landed, that tells me that's where he played it. And uh, he's perfect on this 11 ball. Yeah. Uh, if it goes. Nice. Yeah, I think it does. Pretty sure it does. And he'll play the 11. If it doesn't go, 15. then he'll uh, well over hit that. But no, he's getting down on this. So it's not bad looking, except for the fact that the 13 and the 15 now both have to go into that same pocket that that last ball went into. So this one just has to be nicely controlled, so he ends up nicely on the 15 into the same pocket. Very well handled. He's jacked up over the three, makes that shot a little touchier. and Looked like no problem at all. Yeah, yeah, he handled it. He handled it like a pro. And now comes that 14, which he left up table. And really, he moved the eight ball in a really favorable position to play off of the uh, 14 as an out ball. You just got to make sure you don't end up on the wrong side. Yeah, that's perfect. So now he'll float over here. Yeah, that was perfect. Just past middle table, I would say. Make sure you don't get behind the two and you're fine. He's got a pretty big window to land in, and he should be okay. Yeah, he's got enough angle that he kind of has to. He'd have to hit this super sweet if he ends up hooking himself behind the two. It just <laughs> has to drift, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, went forward. Keep it simple. Yeah, Jeremy's a he's a real good. Uh, he's really good at finding those simple solutions. This eight ball. 
to retake a two-game lead. It's going to be 10-8, Jeremy, and he'll be breaking in the next one. Red Wren a couple of racks ago said that Jeremy's heating up, and uh seems to be the case. Yeah, and Robbie had a good opportunity there, but he's just I feel like he's having a little trouble capitalizing on his opportunities later in this match. Not quite getting out when you would, would think that he has a good opportunity to do so. Making sure the balls are tight before he lets them loose. Well, they've both been searching. Let's see if he keeps doing the same thing. He's staying over there for a bit. It's funny yeah. How it just seems difficult sometimes, doesn't it, to make get the break to come out good. And other days it just seems easy. I think, uh, I mean, a ball went in, but, uh -oh. oh, and the cue ball. Watch cue ball. No, it stayed good. up. That stayed up for him, so he's going to have a look here. And even that ball that went in, it didn't look like it was sort of a, a no, nothing. It wasn't destiny that that ball was going to go in. It just <laughs> popped in. Yeah, it, it could have stayed up. It could have taken a weird kiss. Um, but he's got a look, and I'm not sure if he can see the 11 right now. He might be corner hooked. Yeah, he's got it. Okay. He's digging down. He's probably going to pop the back, back of the six ball and bust these balls open. Just make sure. You know, I've been in that situation and you pop them open and then all of a sudden the eight ball flies in and you're like, oh, how did that go in? <laughs> you should have thought about that before you whacked them. Yeah. I've it's lost a... a lot of games that way, but uh, I, I, now I try and predict where the eight ball's going before I whack them. But he had no problem there, Drew, and, and avoided moving the eight. So this, he's kind of in an interesting spot here. He's He can play the combo in the side and push the 13 towards the pocket, I think. I think or, just, he might just draw the play the the thirteen in and with a lot of draw and kind of try and nestle your way back and and that was my second option. Yeah, if the eight and the ten ball kind of clear, then you're happy. Look at that, he's lining up the eight ball. So what that tells you, he's considering not bumping anything and sh running out his balls and leaving the eight ball where it is and shooting it past the six. He was just checking to see if he likes shooting the eight ball past the six. Yeah, on the overhead, it's, I don't think it goes. It's tough to say, Yeah, obviously. you wouldn't think so, but he's having another look. That tells you it's still close. Yeah, it tells you it's really close. Close his one eye, squints at it. A little shake of his head. He's not super happy with it. And he can definitely relocate it if he wants to. Yeah, right In now. In either yeah. of those shots, yeah. So you're saying 10 ball into the nine. It would be nice if the nine was slightly more on the front side of that pocket. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Kind of cutting it. And tapping the 13. Possibly nudging the eight to freeze it under the solids. I think I still prefer the 13 and just drawing back a lot. Yeah. It, Soft, sweet drawing. I do think. I think I agree with you on that one. Brush past the eight and the 10. But he's got no easy decision to make here, so. There he is. He's digging down. He's playing my shot. Oh, he didn't. Did he, he call the bench? He yeah, had to have he, called that He bank. called it. Yeah, he did. Oh, man. He was that not was playing my shot. That was sweet. Yeah, and he managed to just brush the 10 ball out of the way, and stripes are now open. Now, his initial question, does the... You know, he was looking at the eight past the uh, six. Now, if that is the plan, then he's going to have to leave the temple there till last. Right. Um, which is no problem at all. And the fact that he's not shooting the 10 tells you that's what he's doing. So he had a good old eyeball about that eight ball. And it doesn't look very nice, does it, past the six? It doesn't, man. In fact, even from our commentary box here, you can look right at the table and, boy, it doesn't look good. And he's shooting the 10. So that tells you he doesn't think it's good either. I don't know if... If the eight ball moved at all, he might try to go he, into did, it. Did the eight ball relocate in that last shot? I wonder. Uh, it bit. might have just half an inch. Tons of inside spin to kick kick into. What him. a shot! That needs to yeah. sit down. That was a good shot. That was that was a a frame winning shot. 
Yeah, the rest of this rack looks straight. Negotiate forward. those ki kisses that leave all the solids clustered in the middle of the table and just pick your balls out. Uh, he a ton of inside spin on that to to come back and hit that that eight ball. Yeah, it's a beautiful touch. It's a good anticipation of where your cue ball is going to land, and knowing you got that nine ball hanging, you can take a chance on going yeah. into those balls and and really opening up the rest of the rack, like you said. What do you like as the last ball here? Um, I like the 12 if 12 you can. Ball. Yeah, that's right. You, you can just kind of roll through the kind 12. Kind of a follow shot, yeah, with a little bit of angle and go on the, hopefully just enough angle. If he ends up there on the 12 in two shots time. It's pretty ideal, huh? Yeah, then he can just roll it in, can't he, and go forward. Down for the eight. Yeah, I agree with and you. And so it's nice. Might as well take the 14 now, the 15. Is your shot before the 12. Yeah, he can take the 14 now. You just got to be careful with the 5. You don't want to get hooked on the 5. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to be Chinese or too close to any of these uh, cluster of solids in the middle of the table either. You want to clear those. Right, yeah, and if you, you end up over those. accidentally somehow. Like not have a good angle, not have a good angle on the 15. Because he does have quite a, quite a big angle on his 14, right. so he may have to actually go all the way to the side and punch this in. Which is why I was thinking the five ball was his big issue here, and look wow. at this. this and there you are, you're absolutely right. The it. five ball is kind of right in the, in the way. Yeah. It's one of those where you kind it's of journeys. gotta know that you can take a big angle on that 15 because you need that angle on the 12 anyway. You don't have to get straight in on the 15. It's Jeremy's uh, turn to start mouthing expletives. <laughs> I'm doing my best lip reading here. Well, it looks he's... like the same word that Robbie was saying before. <laughs> there you go, Plan B. He still had a shot on the 12. Okay, ball. so and this, this time. Didn't hook himself behind the five. But he's dead straight on the oh, five. Yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? Might have a little bit of an angle so he can just force follow this. Yeah, really pound it. Yeah, he's this hitting is a high fun on the ball. shot to watch. This is a fun he's shot to watch. Just enough angle here. Beautiful. Oh, he hit that perfect. That Oh, that scratch is so close. <laughs> he's he, in. he landed on the point, you know. I was looking at the overhead view there and uh, that one crept in. Yeah. He was corner hooked a little bit. I think he only had half a pocket or something. Couldn't see the whole ball. That's a, that force follow that he played, that, that's such a fun shot to play. Oh, watch, man. Yeah, yeah, and to judge, I don't know if he put spin on that any left or right or center or whatever with that follow shot, but came off that end rail with perfect angle just to get down there. So well. He, the key just, there would be don't give enough speed to scratch because that scratch is kind of there, isn't it? Right, right. I don't know. He had a kind of a small window for all the way up and down table with those clusters, with the cluster of balls. But he hit it sweet. He hit it pure. And he got the job done to make it 11-8. He only needs four games, folks. We're going to be closing the betting polls on who your horse is soon here. Who do you think is going to win? Are we going to see Robbie make a, make a little push to come back? Okay, so he kind of smashed that break. He really got all of that one. He made two balls there. I'm not sure if it was a solid and a stripe or or uh, two solids or two stripes, but this is a good looking split. No, yeah, yeah. no problem balls for either either yeah. suit. It'd be a nice nice time in the match to break and run, wouldn't it? And Punish Robbie, who's not feeling the greatest right now, I don't suppose. Probably over there stewing, huh? Over there fuming. He's got to make sure he's ready for his next opportunity. He doesn't know when that's going to be. Yeah, I like taking the stripes there as well. He wanted, I think, uh, I'm not you sure. You were thinking solids there, weren't you? No, I like stripes yeah, there. Yeah. Um I'm not sure what ball he was trying to play next, though. No, it's not obvious, is it? Probably on the combination and missed it, didn't he? Right. And that combination, actually, no. He pr he's probably trying to get on the 14. There's no reason to play the combination because of that slightly off angle when the 12 ball goes into trouble. But yeah, yeah a that's point, a good point. Because he's not on it. He's got to shoot the 10 now. 
Which this can end up good. Really, really solid shot yeah, he's there. Doing well there. It's gonna take the eleven now. It looks like the simplest. Those are real touchy shots, you know. It's it's really easy. Those are pretty missable shots because of how touchy you have to hit it. He's got this idea whether he does like to play that combination or just pick them off, and you've got to take the fourteen first before the twelve. Absolutely. And uh, how he shoots this eleven is going to tell you what he thinks about that. I think he'll just draw this right, and and I think you're right. I think he'll play the fourteen by wow. itself. Look at that draw shot. Why would he draw so much into that ball? It's actually on the fifteen if he wants it. Depends what he likes. If he likes the way the, the rack is starting to look real juicy, though, I'll tell you what. Really, any pattern he kind of likes is it looks pretty straightforward. He can get better on the 14 now. Or yeah, take, 14, yeah. 15, 12. Yeah, I know it's backwards and forwards, but it kind of just seems pretty easy. Yeah. I agree with you. Player preference on this run out. Because they're all sat there. They're all sat yeah. waiting. Yep, yep. He's he's on this on this twelve real nice and just kinda stun over for the eight if you don't want to move if you do want to move the cue ball at all, I should say. He'll probably just stop it and keep it simple, knowing Jeremy's game. Nice and simple. And this is a real nice break and run out. Opportunity, I should say. If opportunity knocks. Jeremy's going to answer, and that is a 12-8 lead. Yeah. Man. So we're really looking at like a uh, 6 or 7-1 to one game run from Jeremy. He's on a 6 or 7-1 to one run where he was down two. Yeah, when Robbie was on seven, he was several games ahead, wasn't he? It was 7-5 uh, it was yeah. seven, five at one point, and Jeremy's won... The next uh, seven of eight. So that's quite the run. Yeah. He's really turned it up here at the uh, latter half of this match. He's going to be tough to beat from this point. Robbie's really going to have to to put, really at this point, I feel like he's got to put at least one a one pack, like a three, one three pack on him to make it back. So Jeremy's going to stay with that break, which you could say was successful, obviously, because it led to a break and run. They definitely don't open up as nicely as his other dry breaks that he started breaking. He was dry breaking, but they opened up so good. Yeah. Um, which is no good at all, of course, if, you, if it's dry. But uh, um, they all definitely seem more awkward. But yet again, he's made a ball and given himself a chance. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Awkward Ooh, though, isn't it? See, it is awkward. Let's take a real quick look at the overhead and see what he's trying to navigate through. I think I like the solids just because of where that 1110 is. That 1110 is pretty hard to deal with. You got the seven ball to break out the four if you want. Still not necessarily straightforward anything about this rack. He likes the solids too. He's going to play the one ball. Interesting choice with the one ball, leaving the six there. We'll see how he uses that six later in the well, rack. Yeah, because got to do something to break up those balls there. And I feel like he was taking kind of a chance. He was kind of taking a chance with the... Uh, one ball on not necessarily establishing, you know, it was kind of missable. But he made it, he made it dead center. That was, that was a wonderful shot there. Unfortunately, oh, you know what, I, did he break that four ball out enough for it to go? I think he might have. That was a beautiful shot. But now the three ball, well, the three ball goes in the side, so he'll, he still should be okay. Did he 
squeak it in by the six. That's two beautiful shots in a row right there from Jeremy. Really grinding his his way. Yeah, well, I mean, the, it's not like a, a four two combination looks any good. Mm. So you, you'd like to get the two ball gone before you use the seven to get on the four. He might have. Oh, it and now. he's on the two ball. Okay, so that's really good for this. Then he can simple this up, clear in this pocket for the four ball in a two three two shots time. And he plays it with perfect yeah, speed to right. land on the six. All of a sudden. His run out looks obvious. Yeah, absolutely. Where do you like the eight ball? Because the four to the eight yeah. isn't necessarily straightforward. You got a couple balls surrounding the eight where if you run into one of those balls, it's going to get funny real quick. Interestingly, though, the eight ball actually, once his six ball's gone and the, and the seven ball's gone, is clear into all six pockets. Yeah. That is a good point. Yeah. You only it's need just... to find one of them, and you do have to get to it with from the four. Yeah. And I mean, you, you want to play... I know Patrick's out there screaming that the eight ball goes in the side pocket. So he's left himself an angle. I don't know. That's quite kind of a lot of an angle, but... Uh, so you, running into the 13 here, this is going to be, this is gonna be really? the key. Yeah, he's going straight up into the 13. Oh, he got through that hole. I think he put a little bit of inside yeah. there and got through that hole. Um, yeah, sometimes because that ball looked like it was kind of froze on the rail uh, that he shot at, and you can kind of catch the rail a little bit sooner before the object ball, and the cue ball kind of flies flies off the rail, doesn't oh, it? Oh, opens up. Yeah, he's that up. angle opens well, up a okay. little bit. I and mean, the key there was he made that ball down the rail. Get the draw and the outside <laughs> spin to help that ball in the pocket. He, he's really catching a gear here. Yeah. So that's another break and run. He doesn't mind these awkward racks because he gets out of them. Yeah, that's that's uh and that's that really two pack. He's uh it's thirteen yeah. eight. He's really starting to pull away. I mean it's gonna it's just getting tougher and if tougher. If he breaks another him. one, he's gonna be on the hill and Robbie's gonna have his work cut out. And he hasn't stood up for two racks. You know? And if if uh Jeremy now plays another one of these racks that seems awkward and it and he doesn't make a ball on the break. Robbie's going to have have to maintain level-headed, you know, decision making to decide how he's going to uh, approach an awkward rack if that's what he he's given. Right. And Not play overly in aggressive. Eight, in eight ball, it's so easy to start running balls and running yourself into a losing position. Okay, so let's see how he hits this one. Okay, Same so story, you know, it's kind of an awkward go. rack that doesn't open up as well as his previous, you know, how he started this match. But the benefit was he's making balls now. Yeah, you got to think. He's he's finally making some. And so he's already had two breaking runs from difficult lies. He's faced with another one. Yet again, we've got a cluster of balls involving oh. both solids and stripes. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I like the solids, but there's just no easy starter. You can start with the two, but that's it, really, I see for the solids. Yeah, it's awkward, though, isn't it? Solids. As yeah, but you're really controlling is. that 14 with the solids. Yeah, right. Whereas the stripes don't really cut any of the solids out, necessarily. Where if you run into any of those balls, you got a better chance of freeing up the solids and the stripes in my head. So, but like I said, there's no easy Please starter. Oh, this 15 in all, all the way down table and maybe try and bust the 14 out with this shot. That'd be one for the highlight reel, I'll tell you what. Well, he hit it sweet. Yeah, I didn't know he could get so high. But... What do you do with the 14? Nine? The nine's kind of an issue. Um, that 13 is going to go by the four in the side, so that's not a problem. But Really, the, the rest of the rack is not straightforward. No. Well, 
Well, he must have played for that thin cut shot on the 13 in the side pocket. Or he's got the 12 ball. I was going to say, he can use... He can Actually, 12, 12 ball better, isn't it? I like the 12. You can go into the 14 and then leave And the he is hitting up with left-hand spin. That makes his shot so much tougher. But it looks like he is putting inside English on to do what you just said and get the cue ball to go into those. Boy, what a great shot. What a great shot. And you can see the spin on that cue ball. And that made shooting that ball into the pocket that much tougher. Absolutely. Handled it. Handled it real well. He's not well. out of the woods yet. Nope, he's still got this nine to worry and about. he's committed now, so he's got to come up with something here. That's absolutely right. He's going to have uh, quite quite the time getting yeah. on that nine ball. The solids, if they ever get back to the table, have a nice-looking table. Robbie does not know if he's going to get that chance. I think that nine ball is going to go between the one eight and the side if he wants it there. And that is kind of amazing, isn't he? That he's landed right on that 14 like that. He's got down to it quick. He tells you he likes, he likes it. I think he's got the angle Just to get short to side. Get behind, the, behind the nine. He may have been playing a little kiss off the one ball. That would have made that perfect, wouldn't it? But yeah. the, maybe not. He's on this ball. He's on it. Nice. Roll it all the way up table. Yeah, you got to think he's, he's on this relatively nice for the layout that he was given. And so, it's a, I'm not saying he's done yet, but if this goes in. Yeah, this is a huge shot. Oh, drilled it. Get in the hole. Wow. Gave it enough to come off the rail. What a this shot. Is boring times for the Robbie fans out oh, there. Oh, man. Because this is three break and runs in a row, all of which were awkward, difficult looking racks. Yeah, nothing easy about those and, last uh, two or three. Jeremy's showing you why he c considers eight ball his favorite game because he knows he's really good at picking picking apart some of these complex situations. Yeah, that's one thing that's impressed me from the start since I started watching Jeremy play is that he really has his, his patterns dialed in. He reads the table extremely well and controls right. the cue ball. He makes controlling the cue ball simple. You know, he never does. You'll never see him dance that cue ball around the table. Like, you know, I feel like he chooses a lot of different options before he goes with, with moving right. the cue ball. That's right. So, and that, you know, that really attests to his eight ball knowledge and just uh, knowing that that's the best way to play this game. So, Jeremy hitting his last break of the match. And yet again, they just don't look like they're opening up good. Yeah, I think that uh, one that was the dry. worst one yet. Yeah, this is an ugly looking and table. So, yes, Robbie's happy that he's getting back to the table finally. But he's going to have to do something productive with this mess. <laughs> yeah, there's the patented ha hand flip. Uh, yeah. We all know what he's thinking with that one. He wants to shoot some shot that blasts him up and rearrange him. He can't be spending too much time thinking, and that's what you end up getting when you do that. Yeah, I didn't. He didn't necessarily give it away here. Well, but this is a good opportunity for Jeremy to run him out because he's still got some problems on the table. But the way he negotiated those last two mat, those last two racks, you really think that yeah. he's got a pretty good chance of ending this match right here. Start with the four. I thought he would have started with the four or the two ball. So he likes the four. I don't think there's enough space. Yeah, and I guess the, the six two. ball goes just nice. But you're right. What about the two? Angle on the three ball to get on the two, get get the two ball out of there. So that may be what he's playing. Oh, he's going way up table. He's going to take the five ball out first. Yeah, he'll work his five way and from the one, yeah. one ball first, and then the five. So he'll work his way from bottom so, to top. Yeah, as we so look I guess at the he's table. absolutely fine and happy with where the six ball is sitting. And he's got to use the three ball, doesn't he? So in three shots time, he's going to probably be on the three ball in two shots time. Yes, sir. I think you're right. That's a, that's a solid shot to get there. He's a little straight. You know, I think he would have liked more angle to get around the table a little easier. But he's got an angle nonetheless, something to work with.
Yeah, he's got his choice here. Well, yeah, I... he's not on the three, so he's got to hit shoot the six. Six, not really much of a choice at all, is it? No. Yeah, you're right. He's got no choice here. Is what I meant to say. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, even even you know, and probably two or three or four or five inches. Leaving his breakout on the two till last, and it's not automatic that getting on the two on the three in a nice angle from this seven ball. No, you're right. You're right. Um, it requires a shot. Now he's going to z-bank across backwards and forwards. One can, side of the eight and back on the other side of the eight with perfect speed to give himself a good angle. What if he goes at the end of the two right now? I think that's probably even better. With that angle there, yeah. I think I would have done that. Oh, it needs to slow up. Okay, so it still goes in the pocket next to the eight. Or yeah. in the top right. It'll go by the... He, yeah, eight. he's not on the two. I think that he's got to shoot the three first. He's got, he'll take this and three. And he's okay with it, yeah. He doesn't mind. And, and this leads nicely to the two. You just got to make it. Not an easy shot. It's Is that going to fall? It's going It's in. going. All right, so he's got two shots for the match. This not not necessarily straightforward, but a nice little draw stroke here, and you yeah. like him to get on Try the eight. Try and draw to the side rail and not hit the eight at all, or negotiate a little tap on the eight. I don't like running into the eight if I don't have to at all. Play the shot a lot softer and just a hair of a bump. Yep, it all comes down to this stroke, yeah, yeah, though. Yeah, in with draw. Depends how much angle he's got on this two ball, whether he likes it or not. Because that shot, you try it and then accidentally clip the eight and everything sort of goes weird. Yeah, it's heading towards that 15-11 and you're hooked on, that, on it. Yeah, with that speed, you don't the draw doesn't kick in until after it's snicked and probably made contact with the eight. Yep, yep. He is digging down deep, though. There it is. He knew he didn't like it. He got that weird kick on the eight, which sent it into no man's land. And meanwhile, missed the two ball too. And he was probably consumed thinking about that eight ball. That is a chance for Robbie, which he didn't know he was going to get. Yeah, you got to be still happy. ready for it. Zinging around the angles to break these two balls apart. No. Smarter, wiser Robbie. Better ways to break these balls apart. Yeah, it looks like from here he'll probably play 12, 10, and then go into him. Yeah, and you've got to end up with a shot on either the 15 or the 11 after you bump into him. Almost like rolling this 12 ball forward and then coming in behind the 15, 11. If yeah, you, that's, like that. a, that's a good option for, like for me. Just, a lot of way, ways it can end up okay for you there. Yeah. That's what he's doing. He's giving himself that little angle there. Probably more than he wanted, really. Right. So now he'll probably run right into the 15, which is going to more <laughs> than likely push that 11 towards that, that bottom left corner pocket. He still doesn't like it. Well, yeah. I mean, It this... might be that just rolling this 10 ball in just misses the 15, and you do get it off the, off the rail. If it was automatic, though, I think he would have already shot it. So, okay, what he's showing you is he agrees with you. He's going straight into the 15. Yeah. And he's digging down there, so he didn't have to, but he is choosing to. How's your love? Okay. Oh. Do nicely. The billiards god said. We're, we're Big not, sigh of relief after not, that cue ball didn't disappear, huh? Yep. That would have been the end of the match. Instead, he's going to grind back, and uh, seven games later, he's going to end up winning this ra this match. Double checking his tangent line here. This is all speed. He's hit that good. That'll do nicely. Yeah, so he ended up really nice on that ball. All right, hold your nerve, that's Robbie. That's right, that's right. This ball has to go into the hole. Okay. We have Almost a, hooked him. So. We have a match here, folks. Don't go away. Don't change your channel. This is going to make it 14-9 if this eight ball goes. Robbie's planning on breaking and running the rest of this set out. Let's see if he can make a ball on the break. Yeah. Robbie's not going away quite yet. He's not quite done. We want to thank everyone out there for watching the Mad Apple King of the Hill series. I know this match isn't over yet. I just want to say that quickly before it is. Yeah, we are kind of on the heel side of this match, so. Hey, we might be barely past halfway. If you never know. It, yeah. Depends if he's... Oh, well, look at that. Eight ball break. 
Of course, that doesn't count as a win, but it does count as a bull. Yeah, and so that ball will spot up. He can he can either re rack the rack or he can play it as lives. They've opened up so nicely as long as he can see his way to making his first shot. Yeah, for stripes. Stripes look really inviting stripes here. Stripes do look better, don't they? Just because of that one and the five. And does he have a shot on a stripe? They're all kind of blocking each other. He's got a combination he's showing yep. you. Yep. 13, 14. Big shot here. Hope this goes in, Robbie. Yeah, and it offers automatic shape for the most part for any other stripe ball on the table, so just bear down and make the ball. He's okay. Um, and he's got a nicer open table than uh, the last uh, three break and runs that uh, Jeremy just took out. Yep, it's not this over yet. the nicest looking table, but uh, in, in recent last few racks but uh it doesn't mean it's going to be automatically out unless you do it right absolutely i mean this these balls that he's kind of on right now that 11 is kind of weird yeah the 12 is kind of weird it's almost like he's got to shoot the temple oh look okay so he's looking at the 11 in the side there uh, to yeah get, to get position on that that'll be nice that would open everything up i was going to say the 10 ball all the way down to where he's standing right now um, but if he can get on the 11 in the... Okay, now it is going to be the 10 oh, after that. Yeah, he did. That's not what there. he was planning. But the 10 will go, so he's still okay. I was thinking about getting on this ball. 10 ball the long way, but... Uh, the problem with the shot that he was trying to get on the 11 in the side is if you overhit it, you hook yourself behind the 8. And so maybe that was why he ended up hitting it, so underhitting it. Right, he underhit that because uh, it was the safer way to play it. You're always going to have some kind of option because of that, the way he played it. Yeah. But and not an easy option, and then ends up missing no, it. Yeah, he definitely had a chance to make that 10 ball there, but uh, Jeremy now has a chance to uh, close this rack out. Um, still got to come with a shot here, and I think he's on this two ball to break these, the one and the five. If he likes the way it is, he's just going to roll right into him now. Yeah, and he also has a problem with where that four ball lays as well. Oh. Does so he, he have the combo now? He's trying to go around. The combo trying... didn't go before. And that one ball might go now. Oh, you know what? That one ball Still goes doesn't... by the 10. He can see enough of that one ball to make it by the 10, I believe. But the 5 four stops you getting on the one ball. That doesn't look very nice, though, does it? Um, I think that he... He can use the three to get an angle on the six to yeah. go into these. I think he has to go into them, doesn't he? You know, I, I that's what I'm saying, MH. I think he's got enough of the one ball to make it by the 10 if he gets the correct angle. Really? Like use the six to get on the one? Yes, exactly that. And then the four ball is still over there by itself. The four ball is the big problem with this rack. If that one ball is free. And obviously that one ball's close, but I i mean, just in my stance, I think it he goes. He could leave the four till last if he can figure out a way to get almost straight on it, just a fraction of an angle on the four. He's going down to, to do what? He's going in. He's going into the 5-1 now. Wow. Off of the six ball. Wow, he, wow that's incredible. He had to roll, roll that far forward down table just to get the right angle. Trusting he wasn't going to overhit it. And that has turned out perfect. Yeah, beautifully so that negotiated. Robbie now knows there's a good chance he doesn't get back to the table. Yep, next time he'll get out of his seat is to shake his opponent's hand. It really depends on negotiating the speed on this shot here to get shoot the one in and end up nicely on the five. To get Because he has to four. get over and get straight on the four ball. Yep, that's exactly right. So the angle on the five ball here is critical. Yeah, and he's a little thin, you know. The cue ball can get away from you real quick a little bit here. And you're stretched out. It's tough to negotiate. You know, you lose touch when you're stretched out. And you're yeah. a little thin, so That's it can right. get away from you. And he has a choice. He can go on either side of the five ball. He's got two different pockets to shoot it in. Um, the one that he is going to, 
means your speed has to be perfect because any kind of angle here and he doesn't he cannot use it and yeah there you go see, he's got too much angle this is weird this is weird i mean two rails for short side on the floor all the way up past yeah. the side pocket but that's not an easy shot on the no, floor ball that's right you think about that shot and you end up thinking the eight and the 11 somehow come in, in, into your path Either that or bank set on a bank on the floor, but it's so fr it's so it looks like it's really frozen on the rail, which means you don't have a lot of angles that you can shoot that bank from. Correct, and that kind of that kind of sacrifices so what's position doing? to the eight. He's not going to be inside English on this, is he? No, no, he's putting awesome. outside, low outside. Looks like he's aiming plain ball. Maybe even oh, center no, low. It was outside. Yeah. And what a nice shot. Yeah, a lot of outside. Absolutely stuff. beautiful. Bring that ball out square. That's a really well controlled shot. Yeah. Um that's this still not this is probably I feel like Yeah. It's a hairy shot this. This is like the hardest straight in shot in pool. Corner pocket. No problem at all. Made it look easy. What are, yeah. we, what are we talking about? He really did make us that look silly. Huh? Fairly simple looking. He, uh, he really oh. executed that I'm shot sure well. Anybody who's ever tried that shot knows that it's quite easy to miss that. Yeah. And there you have it. There you go. Jeremy, a dominant performance. Robbie sh shooting himself in the foot and wishing he could have had some of those racks out. Moments of glory for briefly there for Robbie. Uh, but. And that's going to end his five-week streak. Jeremy's cool, calm. Yeah, that was it. Great match, great match from both players. Uh, we have a new champion. The king is dead. Long live the king. Yes, sir. You just feel like Jeremy Jeremy battled so hard at the beginning of that match. And just once he once he kind of got his, uh, his fingernails dug in, he yeah. didn't let go, you know? He didn't let go. And, and that's... Has to be said. Jeremy's been here before. He's been king of the hill. And there's a good chance that he can stay king of the hill for a good streak here. I don't know who's coming up next. Nope, but we will be back next Friday. Thank you guys for tuning in. Yep, tune in next same time, same bat channel next Friday. We also have uh, the Jester matches and the Knights match and the Queens match on Sunday. Sunday, we've got a big, big day, as always, of pool f for you. Yeah, I think we start about... Uh, 11 30 11 45 with the queens match first yep so tune in sunday guys i'll be here all day sunday i believe and uh thank you again for yep. tuning in thanks for watching thanks for being here kyle and we'll see you next time yes sir signing off